is our generation. I don't mind. And welcome, everyone, to another fun-filled evening, I guess, of Spline Designs Studio Saturday. Continuing some work on our uh, scratch build track, I guess, for the NASCAR Racing 2003 season. Welcoming in, welcome in some viewers there, Torch, Racer James, welcome. Glad to have you. Um... Just getting some things still uh, <clears throat> set up here. Not 100% ready. I've been working on um, some things, as you could probably see. I've cleaned up um, uh, a little bit of the uh, visuals, as you could say, as far as the stream goes. I put a, a lot of the stuff that's been primarily in the viewing area out of sight and put it more towards the bottom uh, of the stream there, as opposed to cluttering up, I guess. Uh, the viewing area there, so I still included the uptime and, and th such things as that, but um, just want to get that out of the way. Also wanted to mention, some well, amongst the many things that I have um, adjusted, I guess, to the stream, and this moves forward, I guess, with um, as far as on Wednesdays and uh, Friday evenings, um, as far as the use of the flip of the coin is now a shot of adrenaline. So, instead of it being... Um, win or lose, I guess, as far as gaining yourself uh, shots of adrenaline or losing, you, you just gain. Uh, the only other difference that I have applied to it is um, you have to, there's a little bit of a waiting period. Uh, so I just wanted to kind of get that out of the way and I'll show you how that works really quick here. So if you do exclamation point shot, see like that one was a successful one. Now you will not be able to, once you administer yourself in a shot of adrenaline, you won't be able to use another one for a while, so you'll have to wait. So if you attempt to, I guess, to do it again, um, it won't work. So that's a, that's a successful, I guess, one like that. So that's the, basically what has changed, I guess, as far as the uh, uh, flip of the coin. Instead of the flip of the coin, it's now a shot of adrenaline. So um, you have the uh, uh, opportunity, I guess, to gain yourself some. You don't lose any. I guess that's the that's the main take, I guess, for. for uh, difference from the flip of the coin to the shot of adrenaline. So, um, yeah. See, torch. <laughs> see, torch was. Uh, yeah, he missed. So yeah, he didn't get any. Um, now, see if you were to go to try to administer another shot, it should give you a t uh, cool down. So, oh, both James and yourself, you both missed him. Yeah. See, now you'll have to. You have to. You have to wait uh, to get it. So, just to kind of throw that out there, and that's. Uh, primarily just to give um, some um, uh, motivation of sorts. You know, it's kind of initiative, I guess, for more people to come in here because those um, those shots of adrenaline, you know, as far as the adrenaline running through your veins, will necessarily come in handy uh, for up-and-coming giveaways, I guess, as far as in the way of uh, Steam game codes. And to, to, which, to which I haven't been able to give one away all week. I've met at, uh, at least the follower goal. Um, I see it's still actually still showing, I guess, as far as on there. But that has been met. And per my promise and guarantee that if 
either one of those goals as far as the sub goal uh, subscription goes to the channel or the follower goal is met that there would be a giveaway so uh, depending on how, um, how many we get uh, in the chat um, I guess during the duration of the stream this evening um, we'll possibly have a uh, steam ga game key giveaway for this evening so uh, be sure to stay tuned for that if anything and if that uh, necessarily interests you but um, yeah, seeing you, uh, both Torch and uh, James has checked their uh, shots of adrenaline there. So yeah, if you have some in your arsenal, then that's good, because like I said, you will need those, I guess, to participate in the giveaway, because um, that'll cost you some shots of adrenaline in order to uh, uh, earn your chance, I guess, to get that. Uh, you got you got good veins, and well, I guess it didn't work <laughs> that time out there, Torch. Anyway, I wanted to um, at least get that information out there as far as some of the things that I have been working on uh, with the stream, I guess, to make it a little bit more pleasurable to the eyeballs. Um, uh, so, with no further ado, yeah, see that? Yeah, there's the cool down there, James. You have to wait. And I've got it set. Um, I believe last time I checked in, it was a 15 minute wait. It's a 15 minute wait in between shots. And I've done that for good reason. I don't want people basically spamming that shot and giving themselves, um, you know, numerous amounts of shots and, you know, kind of gaining a disadvantage. And this, that's all I see in the chat, I guess, basically. So you have um, a way to check it, I guess, at least anyway. So, uh, yeah, as far as the cooldown for the shot. So, yeah, you have to wait. Um, and that's the way I've got that set up. And like I said, I've done that intentionally. Um, uh, the, the, like I said, the take to that is it doesn't uh, take away any adrenaline from you, any shots of adrenaline. You don't lose any more as far as the way the flip of the coin was previously. So um, I'm just monitoring, I guess, the condition of the stream here. It seems, it seems to be burping a little bit, but um, I don't think it's going to be too much of a problem. Okay, so like I was saying, without further ado, without wasting too much more time, I want to get into what we're all here for, and that's to continue our work on the scratch build for our, our track build in the sandbox for the NASCAR Racing 2003 Racing Simulation. So I'm going to bring this over. Oh, and it just dinged at me, and it should have done that, but that's okay. Uh, so we're going to bring up the sandbox here. So I have the track open, and it's pretty much where we left off last week. Um, one of the things I have considered, even though I have done some work off stream, uh, just to try to um, remedy, I guess, or you know, figure out, I guess, what to necessarily go over, moving on from this point. And one of the things that I have uh, taken into consideration, um, especially this area, I know we had focused lastly, I guess, from um, last week. On this area here the fact that if I turn off the uh, world underneath here the fact that we have this arch here and it really cuts into um, where the grass should be if I was to try and move this this would all have to be grass especially in this area you know and it, it kind of bleeds too much into the actual racing surface here um, so in order to remedy this and this is something that we've gone over throughout the very beginning of doing this as far as keeping your um, the size of your split segments as far as you know taking a segment like this and splitting it up to try and remedy and you know basically repair um, getting this type of trajectory I guess that exists now when it comes into a situation like this and I'm still gonna hold true I guess to what I was saying as far as, far as keeping your split segments to a minimum that that's still something that you necessarily should follow um, but when it comes to something like this to where you're unable to get like if I was to make the, as this sands right now this is all grass from this point up to this point and that's bleeding into the actual racing surface here we don't want that see no, and really the only way to really correct that is to basically to split this so that we can um, suck this in here because by turning this Eucladian that's way too straight there's no way so either way we do this the way it is at this point there's no way to um, you know we'd either have to create this all as um, asphalt 
and or concrete, you know, cutting into this what should be grass, and so on. So it's like either we have too much grass going into the racing surface, what should be asphalt or concrete, or we have this situation where it's um, too much uh, concrete or asphalt going into the grass. So in order to fix that, um, the only <clears throat> the only way to do it reasonably is to split the segment. And it doesn't really go um, too much out of the um, practicing what I preach, if you will, as far as to say keeping your split segments to a minimum because you still want to do that. But when it comes into situations like this, you almost have to. Um, but I will stand tall, you know, stand true, I guess, to what I was saying as far as to try and split segments up here you know, like to create this little island, for example. There's no reason to do that. Uh, these types of areas can be created, I guess, by the use of a track surface decal and or a, even a 3DO, for that matter. So these types of areas, even to include this area, you don't necessarily want to you know, design your segments so that they accommodate these types of areas. Because it, it, yeah, it just wouldn't make any sense. Um, as long as you, the, Probably the key thing to all this, to all this is making sure, I guess, you have... Uh, the proper surface types defined because the fact that <clears throat> in this area in particular this is turn one and then we'll go through this area okay so you have the potential for you know driving on the track or whatever to have to deal with this grass uh, as compared to this concrete or asphalt in this case so that for sure you want to make sure is going to be the proper surface type in order to do that like I said you would have to split this to, to follow this trajectory of this island here so I don't want to sound like a broken record. I just want to make that abundantly clear as far as the do's and don'ts, as far as the necessity, I guess, to split a segment or not. Okay, so without saying any more, I'm going to go ahead and split this segment. And you do so by making sure you have the segment that you want to split selected. Right-click on that. And I know something else I forgot to throw up here, so let me get that really quick. I forgot to put my... Uh, button uh yeah as far as what i'm clicking on there so i'm gonna throw this up here really quick bear with me all right i'm gonna put this down here close out of that i apologize i guess for the miscue on my part but that's i'll make sure i have that up there so <clears throat> that at least gives you somewhat of an idea of what i'm actually um clicking on at least <clears throat> excuse me all right, so as I was saying, we're going to split this segment. So all I'm going to do is right-click um, on the segment that I want to split. Use a split segment, and this will give you... Now, until you click the left-click on here, it won't split it. It'll let you put it to where you feel it's necessary. Um, for this intents and purposes, I might have to do it a couple different times <clears throat> in order to get that F section I guess to follow the contour I guess of that that curved um, so probably what I'll do my rule of thumb here is I'm gonna go at least in the middle of this for starters because I need to get this down to here and then I might have to adjust it here as well but you know keeping in mind this is probably the best step this stage of the game you want to do this because I don't have um, you know, like any walls my textures aren't 100% defined and all this noise so like if you're going to do this type of thing at all this is the the best time to do it <clears throat> so with doing it this way I'm gonna take this off the cladion I should be able to move this and put it more in a better trajectory here so I might even be able to get away with put, putting this one as a cladion all right maybe not let me adjust this here and like I said I might have to adjust it a couple different times still don't quite like that so I might have to move and I can always reopen this I haven't saved it yet uh, this here I might necessarily want to split so that I can move this up into this area because I want to keep this all grass and eventually you know essentially keep this all asphalt that's what I want to do okay so there's a little bit of trial and error just to get what, <clears throat> what might be uh, necessary for you to do and keeping in mind I know I've mentioned this before, as far as when you split, 
all your textures that would be supplied to include anything that you had marked, declad in, what have you, that's all going to be jacked up. So that's cleanup that you would have to do. So that's another reason you want to keep your, um, your splitting to a minimum. And if you're going to do any splitting at all, this is the best time. Uh, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to reopen the track. And I haven't saved anything yet. I'm going to move that split um, so I can take care of this. I don't want to split this again. That would be, you know, kind of a uh, particular thing that people would want to do at this point is just go ahead and split this so they can straighten this, you know, get this smoothed out. Um, I don't think that's the best approach because if I was to split this and I can kind of show this, you're getting into that realm of having too many short segments. You want to keep this to a minimum if, if, if possible. I mean, I could do this. I could necessarily do this, but... What it's, what I don't care for, it, it's not even a matter of my own personal feelings on it, how tight this is getting over here, you'll probably end up dealing with a lot of bumps in this area because they're so narrow. So this is one of the main reasons that we've, I've preached this, I guess, throughout the entire process, I guess, of this. You know, having these short segments like this here, you're going to deal with a lot of bumpiness here. And it's going to be a pain in the rear end to get it smooth. So, I'm just debating now, at this point, whether or not I want to keep it this way, or is this going to be, is this going to be uh, acceptable? Um, looking at it, it may not be too bad. Um, what I still might need to do, though, is, because the way this is, this is fine right here, but this is all going to be considered grass. And I don't know if I necessarily want that to be that way. I might split it again. I could get away with leaving this grass here and then you have a little bit there. That might work. To be perfectly honest. But uh, here, let me bring on the textures again. And I'll have to fix all this. That's I'm not worried about that at this time. I will fix that. Uh, what I will need to do, let's turn on the <coughs> surface types. Now you can see here this is all grass, and it's kind of hard uh, to, I wish there was a way to basically turn um, the opacity, I guess, of this down so you can actually see the background image. But if I switch back really quick as far as turning this off, you can see where this grass is actually defined here. There's actually that asphalt um, portion in here, and if you use the center line, I guess, as kind of a guide as to where that is. I'll turn this off really quick. You can see where that cuts in there. Just a, just a little sliver. That might not be too big of an issue. I mean, because the main thing that you want to focus on as far as where they actually race, where you'll actually be racing, which is in this region. You won't be necessarily... Re you might run off the course and run off the track, I guess, in this area. But as far as having this little sliver still defined as grass as opposed to asphalt, it may not be that big of an issue. You know, because... <clears throat> and considering when they come out, when you come out of the pits here, you would be coming off the pits even if you have the first pit stall. You're going to turn right into this exit, okay? <clears throat> and then, as far as on the track itself, this is your turn one. This is your trajectory, I guess, to go into the infield course is in this area. So this area is kind of a dead zone. I mean, it, can, it might be kind of a runoff area, but uh, that might necessarily work doing it this way. So <clears throat> what I'll do with that being said is go ahead and turn the textures back on. I'm going to go back to display textures. And then I need to fix all these areas up here again. And <clears throat> due to the fact that I do not have a whole lot defined yet as far as F-sections and, and so on, it's, it's a little bit easier, I guess, to deal with these. But you, de you, do, you do definitely want to make sure that you clean these up to include your X sections. See that one right there it had um, reverted back to a curve section. So you have to check all these and make sure that they're all corrected. Now this one here, <clears throat> this X section here, can't do anything about that. So that is what it is. You cannot <clears throat> this is the innermost um, X section here. So there's really not a whole lot you can do about that one. So but I can fix this. 
I will fix that. Mark that as your Caladium. <clears throat> yeah, this XX shouldn't even be fine here. And I thought I had this... <clears throat> Excuse me, my voice is going away already. Now give me a second, folks. All right, apologies for that. Let's take myself a little bit of a drink. All right, so, as I was saying, what uh, you, you do want to do is make sure i got to unlock all the geometry. That's what I was doing. So does, to do that, and I've showed that before, zoom outside of your check spline, your check geometry, uh, right-click, unlock all geometry. And you can do that as many times as you like. It doesn't hurt anything. Just to make sure that you're, uh, you can get... You know, select these uh, X sections and whatever appropriately. So, <clears throat> as I was saying before, when you split a segment, it'll change the interpolation of your um, um, your attitude, if you will, I guess, as far as your X sections here. So I want to make sure we uh, put these all back to mode absolute. The torch giving himself another shot. Did it work? It did work. Torch found a vein. What do you know? <laughs> oh, James missed again. <laughs> Poor James. <laughs> I think that's the second time, isn't it? So anyway, yeah, you want to check all these X sections out. Yeah, see so this one changed the interpolation to that one. And I'm just adjusting these all back to mode absolute. And that'll keep them all consistent as far as keeping the track relatively flat, at least for now. And I'll have to do that on the outside here as well. Check these all. <laughs> James using his emotes there. No, oh, James. <laughs> Torch, did you take James as a drone? You got the good one, didn't you? Well, be stingy now. Okay, so let's... Uh, all right, come on. Why is it not selecting? All right, so, yeah, using my own advice, and I've shown this before, too, once you get something selected in there as, as far as uh, next to trying to click on if it's not selecting, uh, bring up your, um, in this case, they have section properties, and you can move left or right. It should let you do that. All right, why is that not let? Come on now. I make it liar. I mean, I'm gonna do make sure I unlock all geometry. And like I said, you can do that as many times as you need to. Why is that not selecting? Goofy son of a gun. Anyway. Okay. Is it just being buggy on me, or what? The, there we go. So now, once I got one selected, and I've mentioned that before too, as far as uh, zooming in really close um, on a track segment. That usually gives you a little bit more precision of being able to select things. So, um, yeah, that still holds true. Um, and the fact that you don't have um, any way to, when you're on an X section, you don't have this one here. You'd have to go into height view. I don't know, you know what that being said. So, and we showed this before. I know that was something that uh, was unclear to some people that were in the streams, uh, the last couple of streams, uh, the, the ability to be able to change the interpolation of your X section, albeit a mode absolute, um, front, back, what have you, uh, was unknown, I guess, by some, I guess, uh, this way. You, you don't, you can do it in the height view as well. So, like, I have this X section here. If I turn on the height views, which is up here in your, uh, the top right of your sandbox, so this is your height view, and I've shown this before too, and I have those um, in a playlist as far as. Uh, so you right click on, you get your two, you got the two panes. You have your cutaway view, and we have what you call your roller coaster view, uh, as far as your, the waviness of what have you. So this is basically like a side on view of your track. So it's like, if you had any banking and stuff like that, this would be your apron. If you had banking, it'd show your bank on right and so on. Uh, based on the fact that this is still relatively flat, at zero. There's nothing there. So you have your point to what you're under. Now, you don't, you have it selected, you know, in your main view there, correct? So the fact that you don't see 
uh, what type of interpolation is done as far as being mode absolute, what have you. The, the way to correct that while you're in that, um, either one of these views, it doesn't matter. I usually do it on the right side, which is the cutaway view. Um, if you use your um, arrow keys on your key keyboard as far as the front and back, and I'll just use the up and down, then you'll have that, you'll show what that is. And then from here, you can zoom in on this too. Same same function as this in the main sandbox windows with the Z and or the uh, uh, X. And then you can right click on that and change the interpolation here as well. So that's two, two areas, two ways you can change the interpolation, I guess, of your X section. Either in the main sandbox view or in the height view. And you definitely want to be careful with that as far as if you've got... Um, your banking and, and, and such set, if you change that, it, it'll adjust, in most cases, pretty dramatically. So, want to be careful with how you use that, for sure. So, let's see if we can select this next one here and check the interpolation there. Okay, I'm just going to zoom in here really close, make sure I can get that. Let's see, using that zoom key works, use that to your advantage as well. I'm just checking all these. I don't remember which ones. I'm just checking them all just to make sure. Uh, I'm going to actually check over in here too because this is... Zoom in on that. I don't think so, but I want to double check. And the way I can tell, as long as I got the white square in this case, then I know I'm okay. That's a white square. White square. And whoops, did I miss that one? And all I'm doing is using my mouse pointer and just kind of moving that. You get used to it. it's kind of like creature of habit, I guess, as far as uh, moving, navigating around. I guess in uh, primarily like the uh, sandbox view, even in the height view for that matter. And I've got a, quite a bit of um, padding, I guess, on this too, as I've uh, done since the beginning here. Eventually, this this F section will get snapped. Uh, probably to this X section. But I've kind of kept it because this texture isn't 100% um, finalized yet. You just put that on there, I guess, just to have a texture just applied to it. Just an initial placeholder, if you will. So, okay. So now I think we got everything to this point as far as that trajectory. And it even looks better aesthetically. Um, in comparison to this end here, this what this turned out really good here. Um, the fact that we have that little turn off here, like I said, as far as you know, that should be that should work. Um, we should not have a problem there. And then obviously that'll sh that'll uh, uh, be made evident uh, and do some testing for sure. So yeah, we have this set up all as apron. This is pit road. Uh, this is our pit exit, so we have our apron near pits as well as our apron. This is basically where the score tower is, right in this area. So that's kind of like a dead dead area. Um, that's all walled off and what have you. Uh, this is our pit entrance, apron near pits there to get that spotter cue. Um, of course, our timing line, I guess, for the pits would be in this area. Uh, first pit stall on pit road from the pit entrance would be here and so on and so forth. So we've got those pretty much defined. And I may uh, get into that, too. Um, uh, something that I've considered, because uh, eventually we want to get this into the uh, the game itself and actually test and see what we have. And one of the things you'll have to have set is at least the very first pit stall, which is considered stall zero. Um, you have to have at least that one set um, in your track I&I &I, um, in order to, to be going to testing mode. Now, as far as um, going into an actual race mode, um, we're not even close. Um, it's because we'd have to get our LPs um, set for the AI and, and, and such of that nature. So, But as far as testing goes, you can run and test your track in testing mode with just you yourself, uh, the, the human player, um, at, at any time uh, during this process. At this point, if I wanted to, um, I could probably build a PTF as well as a track I and I with that first pit stall sign and put that um, into the tracks directory and test that if I wanted to. Um, I'm not really going to do that, but that's that's totally within the realm of uh, possibility to be able to do that. So, And 
if anything, just you, you can tell it would be all flat, of course. You wouldn't have any. The only boundaries that you would have would be the invisible boundaries, so you would see the texture um, as far as like that. So if you were to go try to go beyond those boundaries and you haven't set, I mean, went through this before too, as far as to have your uh, sections open on left and right and so on and so forth, you would just hit those boundaries and they'd be invisible. So, uh, yeah, that's something. If you, Like I said, if you haven't defined your areas as uh, open on left and right, as far as being able to cross over that boundary, you would, yeah, you would just hit an invisible wall. So, and you could you could test those out, you know, in that nature at this stage if you still wanted to, but I'm not gonna do that. So, <laughs> at least for the demonstration purposes. So I'm just kind of getting an idea now. Um, the other thing that I have been toying with uh, since the last stream is the fact that you've got these um, intermittent, I'll just put it this way, as far as you have these straight segments going into curved segments, which start about here at this point, since we split that. And what you essentially end up dealing with is um, when you apply your texture in a straight, it's, it's usually fine as far as uh, doing a one-to-one, -one, you know, setting your... Uh, your, your texture size, if you go into your F sections, is setting it out to 1 and let that go across. And as long as the segment is straight, you don't have a problem. It's when you get to sections that are curved, that's where you get into texture skewing. And this is something that I have played around with quite a bit. Instead of needing to... Um, play around I guess with your UV values for your texture size for any given texture to get it to match what you've got in your straight segments to basically be able to take a chunk out of your um, track you know uh, trading a DAE I'll just quit beating around the bush so like once you get your F sections defined and in this case you want to have make sure you have all your F sections defined um, in order to do so, but to spit out a DAE using the 3D SimMed utility and chunk out a model so that you can map it so you wouldn't have to deal with all the skewing, the texture skewing as far as the F section goes in Sandbox itself. That's what I say, Torch, skew the screw. You know, that's that's something that a lot of even novice uh, track builders with the sandbox utility have struggled with it's it's a complete pain in the rear end I guess as far as to have to deal with and I can show you well, exactly what I'm talking about so like the fact that we're in this is the curved sections here so you can see how the textures like very misaligned I guess for the lack of a better way to put it the skewing of it is just terrible you know and to get that to straighten out and having to play with those texture skews, see, like as over here in comparison, these are nice and straight. You know, so when you look at your texture, as far as in the wind map, and I'll bring this texture up here just to give you exactly what I'm talking about, and I've shown this last week as well. So if I open up this texture, which is the concrete, so this is, you know, you're getting a one to one, is what I consider. So as far as like when you put it, your texture size as a one, a texture size of one. I'll show that again. In in your um, uh, F F section properties for you know within sandbox, you're putting it as a texture one. You're getting a you know one to one representation of your texture orientation in your MIP, exactly on that track that straight track segment. So this is exactly what you see. Now when you get to curved sections, that's when you deal with skewing. And that's exactly what you deal with on this side. This is towards the end of pit road, pit exit, where you deal with all the skewing. Now, in order to correct that, you know, in a much easier fashion, would be to, you know, for us 3D modelers, I guess that's what I speak for, uh, would be to just leave this as it is, uh, apply your texture much the same as you would on a straight segment, and be able to with the with the use of a DAE through 3D SimMed, having all your F sections and what have you defined, 
spit that model out and, and create a 3DO model to where you can actually model that and have much more control of how that texture is applied to that model and be able to mesh that in with your already existing straight segments, you know, using the F section. So that would be a seamless, essentially a seamless um, look, I guess, to that. You would never know by looking at it, uh, having a 3DO model in comparison to uh, actual track geometry that it was an actual, actually a model that's kind of sitting on top. You know, and that's something I would necessarily, particularly considering the fact that this, the way these segments are aligned here, and you have this wonky wedge here, you know, as far as a door wedge here, you'd want to be able to fix that anyway. Um, whether or not uh, you, I could do that, I guess, in the form of a 3DO in this fashion, or just putting, still put a track surface decal here, that, that we could still play with. You have that option to be able to do either way. To be honest, I mean that's um, I can either create a 3DO model based on a DAA model of of this here, um, because the DAA model would actually have um, this map just like it is, but it could be adjusted in the model itself, if that makes sense. And that would make a little bit more sense if I was actually able to do it. So that's that's probably a fair mention as well. Uh, I'm kind of wondering why that hasn't... Hold on a second. I'm just checking some things here. Oh, I see what it did. Okay. Just checking on that. I had to put that back in stream remote. Okay. Stream's still looking good, so I'm just... Uh, I've been monitoring. I've been <laughs> very... Um, for the lack of a better term, I guess, is very uh, nervous, I guess, about the way the streams go. Uh... 3D model would be cleaner. Yes, and that and that's that's primarily the point I'm trying to make there, Torch. As far as it would be a lot cleaner. Now, you could even go so far, you know. And I, I've I've already proven this to be honest. And in other track builds that I've done, I've actually applied um, like the the painted lines, uh, particularly I guess on a curved um, uh, track, uh, like Martin's values. That as an example. Uh, being able to to make a 3DO model of all the painted lines for your pit stalls, as opposed to trying to line up all those track surface decals, you know, and dealing with the overlap and so on and so forth, to make it a nice clean um, model, you know, in, in its own true sense. There, uh, being able to make it as a model, it, it's much easier that way. Um, and I have proven, it's actually been proven, so it's, it kind of holds true, I guess, to what, what I'm saying here as far as, you could go so far if you wanted to, to create this entire pit stall, to, you know, put your paint, you could, so you would have the ability to, to, to paint, do your painted lines for each pit um, stall location, as far as your, your vertical lines going through here, uh, for example, you could do that all in just one 3DO, if you, if you so chose, um, as opposed to, uh, just doing this little little chunk here so it's <laughs> and I know I've talked with uh, plenty of people I guess about this you know that know a thing or two about this and know you know we've discussed this um, if we had the ability to be able to use and, and model an entire track just by a 3d model we'd probably do it because um, in our minds it's, it's much it's really much easier to do it that way than it is because most of your modern um, racing simulations, they um, most of the tracks are built in that fashion, the fashion anymore. They don't even use this type of utility. Um, you're using such things as Blender and Maya, and even 3D Max um, to build your track, texture it, and all that stuff, and put it in the game and and, and actually be able to use it. So the fact that we're having to for you know the NASCAR racing to uh, NASCAR 2003 racing simulation we're having to use this utility you know it kind of limits us a little bit but we do have the option to be able to mix in I guess as far as the, the geometric things that the game needs I guess to understand what's a wall and what's you know what's a you know what's a pit stall and so on we that's what the only reason why we have to use it that in this fashion but and, and realistically if we really had it our way as far as from track builder standpoint and or um, 
you know, doing this this process, we would have if we had it our way, we'd just go entirely through a 3D modeling program. You know, so the fact that we have the we can do a hybrid basically um, satisfy what the game needs, what the simulation needs as far as uh, being able to find the particular areas, but also to be able to um, um, you know apply the, the three you know the more modern approaches I guess to, to building a track I guess in uh, modern day sims so and I'm kind of just spitballing right now as far as uh, I guess I'm trying to psych myself out as far as you know because uh, we've talked uh, Razor James you know we've been still in the chat there we've talked quite a bit as far as being able to create like such things as 3D, 3D model walls as opposed to geometric walls uh, for example we've already got half of it pretty much done by applying the uh the, the 3d safer so it's like <laughs> what's what's the difference i guess first start as far as taking it that much further and, and actually creating that whole entire thing as a 3d model so uh uh the 1500 each oh you're talking about um oh the limit for 3dos allowed uh, it's more of a global polygon limit, but each object is limited. Yeah, yeah, and that's that's about right. So, yeah, when you're considering as far as creating a model, and <laughs> James and I, we've necessarily we've found this out, you know, pretty much pretty quickly as far as dealing with the lidar data, and I showed that a little bit um, last week's stream, as far as uh, uh, if we had the ability to be able to use that entire point cloud. As far as all that lidar information, you know, it, sky would be the limit. I mean, that'd be just way too. We, you know, we'd be beside ourselves. I guess this is to say the least. But uh, the fact that it, it brings a lot of insight to how certain simulations out there. And I won't, I won't uh, take the liberty. I guess as far as I know, we know which which racing simulations um, we're talking about here. As far as um, they consider their 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 uh, scans of their racetracks to be laser scanned. Yeah, that might be true, but when you really get into it seriously, when you get into as far as considering, yeah, they're being laser scanned. How much of that point cloud are they actually using? That's what it comes down to. There's no way in the unbelievable heck that they're using all that point cloud data from any type of laser scan. It's impossible. Because if you were to do that, if you were to able to use all the point cloud data from a laser scan, for example, you would have to have a supercomputer in order to even load the darn thing. And I don't know about you and most of you viewers out there or whatever like that, but I don't have a supercomputer. So let alone the funds, I guess, to be able to afford a, a supercomputer. So, you know, it, it really gives you some insight. And that's why I kind of showed that a little bit. Um, last week as far as um, how much information is actually in the point cloud as far as the LiDAR data. It's it's a ton. And it doesn't matter um, how, you know, limited, I guess, the scans that you get. You know, a lot of the scans that we get from the USGS um, website that's available for quite a few regions, um, a lot of the NASCAR tracks are, um, they are represented. It doesn't matter which one you get, you know, from the Bristol track to the Infineon track or whatever, there's a lot of data there. And you're talking millions of, of point data, point cloud data. And it's just, there's it's impossible to be able to use it all. You know, and, and to be able to use that in any type of racing simulation, it's just, it's just completely impossible. So, um, yeah, and that's exactly the point I was trying to make there, uh, James. So it's like, what it comes down to, what... <clears throat> ourselves as um, modders, you know, being in the 3D realm or even in the uh, geometric um, realm of things, you know, as far as having to deal with this uh, sandbox utility, how can we, um, for lack of a better way to put it, how can we dummy it down enough to whatever you still got plenty of, you know, a detail there, but it's not, it doesn't look like crap you know it doesn't look terrible you know the aesthetic is still there and that's 
that's that's where we're at and, and the same thing goes true that's from everything to texture skewing you know how your textures are applied to whatever it is you're creating in comparison to if it's a 3d 3d model or if it's just a uh, track geometry splines so it all kind of coincides with each other and it's just being able to marry those two together in some kind of a harmony if you will that's the way i think of it you know we've <clears throat> we've done this more ways than one i guess so far um you know like i said with the 3d safer that's partially um uh, ge geom geometric splines as well as 3d modeling you know be it the foam itself is just the 3d the 3d model and everything else is geometric you know but again like i said as far as what it would be the so bad i guess as far as creating that entire you know beat the outside wall the foam and the steel as a 3d model and still include i guess that w section in this case i guess as the geometric spline that the game needs to understand that that is a wall so that you don't go you know driving through it you know so it's those types of things that we deal with so I know I'm getting off on a little bit of a tangent, but uh, um, these are the types of things that we consider as far as uh, moving forward with building a track. So <laughs> when you think about it as far as like what direction would you want to go in the process of building your track as far as do, I, do you necessarily just chop the track up as much as you need to, I guess, to get it the way it needs to be based on the sad image and so on and so forth or do you take the approach of like okay i know what needs to be there from a 3d standpoint is it more feasible i guess to do it as a geometric spline and split the track up or create a 3 do model and kind of marry that you know do a hybrid and to me you know from a, a reasonable standpoint a lot of times it comes down to uh, marrying the two you know making a hybrid as far as okay the game needs that in order to understand that it is what it needs to be but at the same time i can still create a 3d model i guess to, to to help it you know to show the aesthetic i guess of um a wall or what have you so that's where we're at i guess as far as creating tracks i guess for this you know over a decade old uh, racing simulation so uh, not trying to knock it at all um this is one thing that you know i consider as far as being able to dabble with a lot of the newer racing simulations out there, be it Wreckfest, be it a set of Corsa, um, just to name a couple, um, the the way tracks are built now is all from a 3D modeling program. They don't even use programs like this anymore to define even the areas that are considered racing surfaces as opposed to uh, pit areas and what have you. So what it comes down to i guess in, in my wishful thinking if we could get rid of the sandbox utility altogether and create tracks for enter 2003 just through the 3d modeling program that'd be that'd be awesome uh, one reason i keep coming back is because of those limits it's more fun to use modern technology and try to shoehorn it in that's kind of the way i am too it's just <clears throat> even though we know the simulation is limited you know we kind of still push it you know to see exactly what is possible and the fact that everything that you know James you and I have done in particular I guess as far as with the 3d safer and you know creating 3d models like for front stretch areas to create infield grass and things like that we know it's possible so that's what keeps us coming back you know like you said as far as shoehorning it in there as far as like I know it'll work because I got I got the tools to be able to make it work you know and even call it a um, slide of hand or just like a, uh, a magic trick as far as getting the game to recognize it's like okay this this is this would be a huge model but if you split it up say for example the game doesn't know better it just knows it needs to load it so it, it just it, it renders it as it knows how to do and it, you, you, you can't tell the difference and that's what we've been able to do it's kind of uh, for lack of a better way as far as slide of hand or uh, we'll call it trickery if you will so this this old simulation you know has some tricks up its sleeve and we're able to kind of you know those like ourselves we can bring that out um but it's it's getting other people and this is kind of the the main reason i guess we do these types of streams to get uh those out there that are 
interested in these types of things to understand what is available to you okay the fact that it's not too hard anymore in fact I was just talking to um, um, a youngster I guess it's a fresh out of college um, you know being in his 20 somethings and the ability you know the fact that he took a class I guess with 3d CAD he has the ability I guess to get um, a 3d program you know I think uh, he was mentioning more of a more sophisticated uh, version other than Max, but the fact that these types of things are available, you can get them uh, for next to nothing anymore. So it's it's it, it's really no excuse um, as far as uh, getting those types of things available to you and using it to your ability. Um, of course, it always takes you know, a little bit of patience and some willingness and some ambition uh, for sure. But it's like the fact that there's not really enough people I guess that are doing that they're otherwise taking works that are already out there and just kind of reinventing the wheel well, that's not being very genuine you know you're not being that's there's no originality in that and that's another reason why I guess I, I tend to do these types of streams you know to kind of show you can be original you know don't 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 try to take something that's already been invented and try and reinvent it okay because as new technologies come out and technology comes out at such a fast pace at you know this stage of the game that there's no reason I guess you know a couple years or a year down the road it's just like well this one's already fine I just need to fix this aspect to it it's like no that's that's not what you should you should get out of that that uh, mindset really so uh, that's just something kind of a little bit uh, again on my soapbox there I guess a little bit as far as to um, help bring a little bit more understanding as far as what's going on with uh, uh, doing these types of things so rather it be uh, creating something I guess for um, the NASCAR racing uh, 2003 season simulation or uh, rec fest a set of Corza it doesn't matter um, the tools are available probably even more available than they ever have been and um, uh, to be able to uh, get your fingers dirty get your hands dirty get in there and actually uh, do the work I mean it's uh, uh, sketching on my check here. Now imagine four groups coming along after this track is done and editing and splitting and making. Yeah, it is going to be a yes. And seeing that's what I've seen this happen more times than I care to count. You know, taking something that's already in existence is just like, well, let me just chop this one up. You know, it's like they made this change or what have you. You know, I've seen it with like the Phoenix build, uh, this build in particular. I've heard plenty of other people out in the community uh, mentioned that they're going to take um, an already existing Charlotte track and chop that up to make the road course and it's just it just makes me want to pull my hair out it's just it's like why do you do that that's that that goes from what I was saying as far as reinventing the wheel don't do that that's that's terrible um, it, it, and it is it essentially does it turns out to be a mess I mean it's not it's this is why I'm doing these types of streams. I want, if anything, to bring out a little bit of awareness as far as when you have such a major change into a track, just because there's something out there that's in the likeness of what needs to happen doesn't mean that's the best approach. I mean, that's all fine and dandy in some people's little world as far as like, yeah, that's good enough for me, but um, it shouldn't be. You're thinking too narrow-mindedly in my mind. It's just, and those types of people, I, 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 can't, I can't really you know even support that that way of thinking so um, yeah and I, I've, I've heard of it too and I'm not gonna mention we know who's we know what groups they are and um, you know who's doing it or whatever and they're gonna continue to do that um, my my hope and my wish is that um, some of this some of the information that we can provide here will be useful to them that's that's the only hope that I have for that. So that's my motivation, I guess, to keep doing what I'm doing because this, this in my mind is the best approach to doing it is in the comparison to the way they're doing it. And that's, to me, that's really all that matters. Um, you know, and I've I've spoken with uh, the, those like Torch and Racer yourself as far as, uh, you know, as far as the the advent, I guess, of uh, that ever going to change. So. Uh, it doesn't take away from me still wanting to provide the information as far as uh, the ways that things should be done. Let's put it that way. This is a 
this is a new technological age as far as the way you know I've, like I've already explained as far as how tracks and, and things are built you know uh, with the advent of such things like the unity um, engine as far as being able to create um, different types of uh, virtual simulations you know you, you, ha you have things like that available to you use it use it there's no excuse absolutely no excuse so um, yeah I know I have gotten on my soapbox there for a little bit but I felt it was a little bit uh, necessary I guess is to uh, uh, you know I put I put uh, I, I like to consider myself I put my heart and soul I guess to, to what I do as far as keep being genuine and original I guess with things I always have been and I know I've you know for the longest time there and you know I've got caught into um, the same realm I guess as of a lot of these other uh, would be uh, track builders I guess for any simulation for that matter you get you get stuck in that uh, um, that rut I guess as far as you know doing it the short way it, you know and uh, for me to actually learn just how easy it was you know I'm to the point now it's so easy I guess to be able to do it the ways that we do it now as far as you know implementing and doing uh, creating it in a hybrid type of fashion there's no reason not to do it that way absolutely none you know so the fact that you refuse or deny yourself I guess to uh, uh, to do it the way it should be done it's it's ridiculous so anyway like I said I, I'll tend to get off myself I'm just kind of uh, perusing uh, as I speak here as far as um, how to move this thing forward here I know something like I said I, I, I was considering is um, um, how to apply your your pit stalls and um, this type of information is necessarily uh, not it's not new information let's just put it that way so it's like if you wanted to uh, set your a pit stall you know for testing purposes for this matter in this situation um, what it's really boils down to is just uh, picking a point on your sandbox you know it's like if I wanted to put my pit stall and this is something that gets misconstrued too uh, as far as setting your pit stalls when that that um, point that you that you set you know it's like if I put my mouse pointer here and I take the values in, in the bottom um, right hand corner as far as the D lat and D longs that is the center point not the head of the pit stall or the end you know the the start the beginning of the pit stall it's the center okay and this is something I've argued with um, you know some some other track builders out there they would argue the point as far as like well just set it three three meters ahead no you don't need to do that when you pick your point and I have a jig that's available um, actually and I will share that um, you know freely I guess with anybody that cares to want that um, but <clears throat> when when you pick your point it doesn't matter if you're using a jig or if you're just using your mouse pointer I guess to, to pick that point where you're at that is considered the center point of the pit stall not the beginning not the end the center I want to make that abundantly clear so if we wanted to at this point like I said this track could be um, we could take the PTF put it in the game you know put in the simulation and actually test it just the way it is and it would load as long as you have that um, first initial pit stall and but that's something I felt um, <clears throat> I needed to put out there as well and I will reiterate that uh, once we get to that point as far as defining our pit stalls and I'll probably will use the jig and like I said I'll make that jig a hundred percent freely available um, basically the way the jig is though just, just a fair mention um, it considers the fact that you have your walls and whatever identified as far as the height the proper height of that I guess as far as to uh, allow the uh, the pit crew I guess to function properly so that they're not bleeding through it and so on and so forth so you already have all that set <coughs> so it has that um, in the jig um, that I talk about that I speak of um, it has the the wall actually considered and that's how you set that up there and it, it, ha <coughs> it has a square where the car would land and as far as you know picking that center point up so that you can actually lay those down a little a lot more accurately shot time <laughs> there you go oh did it not work for you again James 
You just can't seem to find that vein, can you? <laughs> I feel I feel bad now. Yeah, I really feel bad. You haven't had any luck here. Now, Torch, that's the second one, huh? Oh, Torch actually missed that time. Catching up by I'm glad that thing is working. I was, uh, you know, I was kind of playing around with that idea. Um, I was not wanting uh, my whole uh, idea, I guess, behind doing it that way, as opposed to the way I had it with the flip of the coin. I didn't want to take, um, I didn't want to take any uh, points away or any adrenaline away, I guess, from users. Um, I wanted you to uh, at least be able to gain some. If if nothing, then you just, you know, right where right where you were, I guess, as far as uh, doing it. So, I thought that was a little bit more appropriate. I guess as as opposed to the flip of the coin. Um, also, there was some um, some other considerations as far as you know. Uh, I've I've had some viewers come in here and uh, kind of abuse that as far as like they considered that I guess a form of gambling. So um, if you're necessarily recovering, I guess from a you know a gambling problem, I didn't want to create a bigger problem, I guess in that fashion. So I felt this was a little bit more. Uh, that's kind of my my reason you know my thinking I guess as far as doing it that way so um, I hope that works out a little bit better seems to be anyway you guys are having fun with it and that's that's all I really hoped for so use that at your at, at your uh, leisure there you like I said you you have the timeouts in there it has the cooldown you can't uh, use it like uh, ridiculously but that is by design so yeah, and yeah. So what I am considering, like I said, you know, with all, I know we kind of sputtered out, I guess, quite a bit of information here. But uh, what I will necessarily consider um, to this point is to create a 3D model, I guess, for this area to clean this up, uh, potentially clean this up. But I may still have to use a track service decal, I guess, to do this. But that's that's fine. I don't. That's that doing that type of thing is. There's no way around that, to be honest. Without doing a complete um, model, I guess, of this area, you know, and, and getting that to blend in using that hybrid, <coughs> you know, hybrid theory, I guess, as far as to get that to blend, it could be done. You could do it that way, but <coughs> I'm not gonna go that far. I think that's a little overkill, I guess, as far as that goes. I mean, you could be, you know, at your leisure, you know, <coughs> if that's something you really want to do, then go for it. And like I said, there's really no limit. You know, there are restrictions, yes, um, as far as uh, what you should do, like how many polys are in the model and so on and so forth, how much you got to break it down, all that jazz. But it's it's not impossible. It's not impossible. Um, so, yeah, I've got that all done there. I'm just trying to think. Yeah, I've already gone over, I guess, as far as the, the skewing of things. Um, and see, you know, moving forward with that, you know, as I was, I'll kind of elaborate a little bit more on creating a DAE, you know, using the 3D sim and utility. Um, you would necessarily have to have your F sections defined. Okay, so that carries, so that mapping at least carries over um, into the DAE, so that when you model it, all that information as far as where, you know, where your painted lines and, and such would be, you want that in there. Okay, so regardless <clears throat> of if you do it, um, oh, my monitor just refreshed there. I don't think that showed up on the screen there. That's kind of weird. Yikes, that scared me for a second. But anyway, yeah, the monitor kind of, it's got its little sleep mode on it, so it's like it tends to, re the refresh rate, I guess, because, yeah, it just, like for a split second there, but yeah, it kind of freaks me out sometimes. But anyway, as I was saying, what you want to do, I just did it again. What the heck? Here, let me uh, give me a second here, folks. I'm gonna adjust my monitor here. It's not showing up on this on the stream, but it is necessarily doing it on my end. So, give me just a second. Okay. Let that come back on here. Yeah. So I've I've had it on for quite. I've had it on all day, and it's like I've been. Um, in and out of <coughs> out of the racing simulation and in the sandbox and so on and so forth. I think it's just like, hey, you know, give me a break here, buddy. So 
And that's fine. I mean, that's that's where we're at, I guess, with technology anymore. And that's, yeah, I think it should be okay now. Um, but yeah, as I was saying, what you want to have applied uh, prior to doing your DAEs, you want to have um, all your F sections defined, regardless of if you put placeholders, I guess, for even like um, the outlines of your pit stalls, for example, those can be moved, okay? And this is something that I've come to understand with, you know, even though things don't line up exactly perfectly as far as in the DAE that you would create, because when you create the DAE, it'll, it'll include your TSDs, your track surface decals. Um, so even if you were to apply your pit stall lines to include your F sections, even your W sections for that matter, um, having those all in there, even if they don't line up exactly where you can adjust that in your in the DAE, you know, as far as isolating those areas, you can adjust those and tweak on it in uh, your 3D modeling program. And then uh, essentially, once you get that all tweaked out, get it mapped uh, properly with your textures, um, then you can spit that out as a as a 3D, either in in totality or just as a piece. So. Yeah, that's, that's, you know, using that ability, you know, the, the fact that you have that um, um, ability, I guess, to be able to take a DA model of your track geometry splines based on a 3D SIMED uh, DAE model and put that into 3D SIMED, yeah. You know, it's like I said, there, there's no reason not to do it, you know. it's just It just becomes a matter of, like James had pointed out, how much is you, you're actually applying to one particular 3D model. So like, if you if you're staying within the constraints of no more than about 1,500 polys and or verts, I guess within a 3DO, then you should be fine. And regardless if you have to do however many models um, that were th within that you know close to that constraint, it doesn't matter. As far as the the simulation is concerned, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. We've already proven this, and it and, it, and it's and it works almost flawlessly. Um. Where it does come into a little bit of consideration, which it should be more, you know, James, you know, we have the tendency, whatever, when we create scratch models, uh, when we texture things, we tend to make the, the, the initial texture that we apply to the models as big as we can actually get it. You know, as far as the so if we end up making it like a 4096 by 4096, we're going to do that. Okay, do you necessarily apply that 4096? Do you keep that, that texture as a 4096? Is that necessary? In most cases, that's what you should consider as well. So once you get the model broke down into the appropriate pieces to stay within those constraints of the 1500 polys, verts, what have you, um, you should always keep in consideration too as far as like, do I necessarily downsize the texture as well? You know, I've come across tracks, <laughs> not in the so um, distant past here, that... Um, they don't necessarily consider that and the way the track you know as far as loading the track and then the more modern uh, um, you know the more modern mods that are out there for the simulation it just doesn't work you know unless you've got a pretty hefty uh, system so that's something else that I take in consideration you still should always consider as far as thinking everybody wants to, you know everybody who's anybody's got a you know they feel they got a pretty beefy system they want to use high res high res skies high res this and that okay but there it does become necessarily to understand that not everybody's got one of those types of machines okay even for myself as far as the system that I have I'm I'm still a dinosaur okay even if I was to upgrade to what is considered the more common you know more uh, a common video card or processor what have you it, you shouldn't necessarily always consider to use everything HD you know I want big models I want high res textures and blah, blah. you shouldn't do that okay you should always consider about the little guy you know if you're especially if you're wanting to share things you know with the public you should always consider that at least and I see that happening more and more so now it's just like everything's got to be high res you know everybody's got 4k whatever well no not everybody's got 4k you know so you're kind of leaving the little guy behind it's just like, well, you know, why should we consider the little guy? It's just like, you know, everybody should have this. Well, yeah, everybody w 
wants to be able to have that, but not everybody can. So, you know, why leave those little guys out? So, um, exactly. See, and that's a good point there too, James. I mean, I have, um, I'd love to be able to have a system to, to have exactly what you're talking about. It's just like have all that, that fine, you know, that finite uh, information as far as how things move and react, I guess, in the, in the environment and so on. Like, yeah, I'd love to have that. You know, and some people do have that, but it's just like those types of people that have that in their in their you know in their arsenal, if you will. They don't consider the little guys, and so that's another that's a whole different um, avenue that I see uh, progressing. I guess with even this older simulation, it's just like, well, I'm just going to throw everything at it because well, my system can handle it. I can't help it if yours can't. That that I think is baloney. I think that's you know. It, it, it comes down to still keeping things optimized. Because even in the newer um, simulations, like I said, like a Wreckfest and a set of Corza, everybody, you know, as far as the way tracks are built, you have to consider your everybody as far as what type of system they have. You have to consider everybody from the lowest end to the highest end. So... Uh, it's not like we're having a picnic on the <laughs> a picnic i had to read that there for a second there that's kind of funny to torch that's funny okay so um yeah moving forward i know i'm i'm going way off on tangent here but i think that's it's a lot of good information i guess as far as moving forward because this it's a lot of things to consider and this all is encompassed i guess with um the advent of being able to use the ladder data that i showed last week um, and I might get into um, playing around with that again a little bit, to be honest. I think I've got as much as I can really do. I mean, I could re really get into... I, I don't really want to at this point until I get the LiDAR figured out. Um, as far as where, um, you know, dealing with the wall sections and stuff like that. I mean, I could necessarily go into... I'm just trying to think... Um, if I did want to go so far as to putting some W sections in, I don't necessarily need to texture them. Uh, like this W sections here that I got for the pit road, they're not textured. Um, I don't have, you know, as far as any height values or anything to it. I just wanted to put them in there just to see um, how that would lay out, how that, how that would uh, uh, present itself, you know, with the way we've got this here. Because what still does need to be tested and this is something else I've taken into consideration as to whether or not the center line going in this trajectory is going to is it going to be feasible. Um, so that's something that does necessarily need to be tested, and that's why I kind of consider uh, without you know, and I'm considering not even going with lidar. If we didn't have the lidar um, that we do at this point, what you would necessarily do is start, you know, at this stage of the game, you would start laying out. Um, um, your W sections for your uh, your outside retaining wall and so on. Uh, so I am kind of considering that, um, but I think what I will do at this point at least is save this the way it is as a new PTF. Um, so I have all this um, new split information here, so that this is all cleaned up now from since from before. Um, I'm going to definitely save that because something something else that I considered too when I was going through this earlier. When I did these segments here, um, I'm still considering this this wall right here, and it, you can probably already see it. You probably th know exactly what I'm considering here so far. So the fact that this segment here, if I was to put W sections in here, it'd be fine. Okay, I could put W sections in here, and all that would be covered. But it's missing this little piece right here. So I would almost have to split that one there, and that's that gets in that, that steps back into that whole realm of, is it necessary to do that? Okay, is it really that important to miss this little sliver of potential wall segment, regardless of whether or not I put these this in as a W section and actually texture it? I guess as you would traditionally and conventionally, or to uh, apply a 3DO model of this here. Okay. What I would consider, and this is this goes into that discussion that I mentioned, 
I could keep this exactly the way it is, apply my W section in here to, to cover the majority of this wall, and then at, at this point here, as far as for this end cap, is just create a 3DO model, as opposed to splitting this. Because in my mind, that's not necessary. Am I wrong? I, you know, I'm, I'm opening this up for discussion because this is what I've seen a lot of track builds. You know, the direction a lot of track track builds go is to say, "Yep, I need that wall segment, I guess, to go all the way to the end here, so I'm gonna split that." Okay, it becomes, you know, a matter of is that necessary? I say no, but you know, some would beg to differ, and you know, I'm open for suggestions, I guess, on that as to whether or not that should be done. But that was something that I came across, um, you know, looking at how this has um, gone so far. And I'm kind of happy with the way this is. And, you know, uh, being able to create a 3DO model for this end cap of the wall here, uh, be it the fact that this is just temporary, they don't leave this up here, I guess, during the um, anything other than the roll event. Um, I, I would say, you know, to not split this. That's my own personal opinion on it. And that's, you know, holding true to my, you know, practicing what I preach as far as keeping your uh, track splits to a minimal. You know, the fact that we've got um, things like this um, applied as far as to, to create the wall openings in the pit wall and such like that, that's about as far as you should really go, in my mind, as far as, you know, that type of thing goes. Because then you're stepping into that whole realm of, you know, splitting a track up so much to the point where it's it's just unnecessary. So, all right. So, yeah, I'll leave that open for discussion. You know, I mean, this this is kind of what uh, it's an open forum. You know, there's uh, really no wrong, no wrong answers. I mean, I'm I'm. Uh, I'm definitely open up for debate, even I guess as far as those types of things go. So uh, uh, I'm, I'm, to be honest, I'm somewhat satisfied. You know, with uh, I've gotten, got, I've gotten past, I guess the the fact that this is kind of wonky here, but the fact that I can still define the areas that I need to, um, as far as um, uh, having a pit stall, a functional pit stall here, and so on, I, I've gotten past that. You know, that's just something that I can deal with, you know, moving forward, I guess, on that. You know, the fact that this looks wonky in here as far as in the sandbox, it, it doesn't matter. As far as, you know, if I was to create a uh, DAE of this track at this point, the only thing that's really going to show is this this F section here. It's only going to go to this point, not this X section. So. Yep, and we've made that abundantly clear, too. So, I'm going to go ahead and save this one, at least anyway, so I have it. I think I've stepped on that a little bit more than I probably needed to, but uh, let me save this as a new PTF. Always using that logic, too, as far as not, um, and actually, just to make sure, I'm going to put the textures back on and I'll save it again. This time, I'll, I'll use the same PTF, yes. <clears throat> only because that I just want to make sure that the texture will actually be applied when I go to open that down the road. Um, I have come across that <clears throat> in, in certain situations where, um, and I think it's more related to the, um, excuse me, to the, um, the the SBX file that gets created for any particular session. Um, but. That includes information based on um, any or what all um, background image you had, as opposed to you know, did you have the uh, ground underneath turned on and what have you. So, I always want to make sure that I give, yeah, so that's the only reason why I saved it like that. Okay, so where I'm at at this point looks like your pancreas. Yeah, it kind of looks like it kind of reminds me of a kidney. In my yeah, in my mind, it kind of looks like a kidney. Yeah, some type of organ anyway. Yeah. Um. All right. So. 
I'm really debating, at, you know, like I said at this point, is whether or not I should go ahead and follow the same logic. Like I said, excluding the fact that we have LiDAR information, you know, as far as the point cloud, uh, to go ahead and at least um, put the outer uh, W section in there uh, to define that region and um, at least have that defined so that uh, I think I might go ahead and do that. And I could save it as a separate PTF and I can always revert if necessary. So, um, yeah, I think I'll go ahead and do that. I'm going to follow much the same process that you would barring that you did not have LiDAR but I think even with having LiDAR it, it's it still would be useful so I'm gonna go ahead and turn the world off again so I can see where the walls are and I already pointed this out before too I don't know if this was uh, just a point of stitching error on my part as far as the sad image but I've come to the determination and I've done a lot of um, you know, looking at the original SAT image as far as prior to creating it as a high res, if you will, um, as far as this little wonkiness that's in here, that's that's really only, and I think that has a lot to do with um, um, the texture distortion. Everything else lines up because I did a lot of different measurements as far as um, how far the center point of this. Um, score tower was to the wall and so on and so forth and what I've come to determine is this part right here is where I want to go this is the trajectory so if I basically just draw a line into this wall going into this section here it's only this little bit of section here that I need to extend this out into this so it blends into that so it's really not that much of an issue even though that it clearly does show I guess in the image there so that's something you you would necessarily consider because everything else that I used as a point of reference as far as lining things up, like um, one of the points that I used was the corner of this garage, you know, as far as this corner of the background image. So this corner of the garage as well as the score tower. And this corner, I used this corner of the garage and this corner of this building, for example. So being able to line those up, everything else is perfectly fine. So that's why I had to go back and actually review as far as where this, you know, which one was correct. Was it following this trajectory, you know, as far as this wall coming out here or this wall coming out here? And when I came to the determination was, was this wall needed to blend into this wall as far as this way. So this is not needed here. So I would have to measure more from extending this wall out behind it you know say to like the score tower making that measurement so that's something you would necessarily have to deal with because as you move and this is probably a fair point when you um even the fact that you're just moving you know strafing to the left or right in um, google earth when you're uh, trying to uh, uh, s crop out your images, I guess, is from you know, for your sat your stitched uh, high res sat image from Google Earth. You're still going to deal with distortion as you move that within the the Google Earth world. Um, you're going to get some shifting of the texture, and that's basically what you know what you witness here. And that's the only area out of everything that I stitched that was, and it turned out being four different um, um, images. I did this corner this corner this corner and this corner the only area that showed any level of distortion was right there that was the only area so as far as you know taking this corner for example I used the corner of this building um, I can't remember what else I used I know this corner of this building for sure to get this quadrant of the image applied and uh, we have now we obviously have the um, James does in particular because as far as has that uh, video available as far as how to do that appropriately. And my monitor just turned off on me again. Damn it! Stop doing that. Okay. I know it doesn't show across the stream, but it does do it for me here. I thought maybe it. Uh, I don't really have that much going on either. That's what's crazy. Usually, if I've got um, 3D Max and stuff like that, there it does necessarily do that a little bit more but okay so yeah moving forward what I'm gonna do 
without any more said, I'm going to apply these outer W sections. This would be the next step as far as going forward. Uh, well, that's good. I mean, it's good that it's useful. I mean, that is, I, I find myself referring back to it as well. I mean, it's, it's a useful, um, yeah, it's a very useful video. You because know, I always forget certain things like, okay, how do you do that again? Yeah. Try to make as much um, available. And I think um, I do have, as a matter of fact, if um, those that are watching the stream aren't aware, there are um, a couple of commands that you can put in there as far as some playlists um, for how to use uh, either 3, 3ds Max or... Um, even um, sandbox um, little shorts in there so there's the how one and the how to that I've put in there and you can feel free I guess to check those out at your leisure um, I, I make it a point I guess um, I've put a couple of them up there I have a couple more to get up there that I haven't yet um, as far as the uses of sandbox in particular so um, yeah you can like I said, you can bookmark those or however you'd like to handle those. Uh, but those are available to you, I guess, for your purposes. Alright, so we're, gonna, we're not going to go ahead and we're not going to texture these as of yet. I just want to get these walls laid out, these W sections. And basically, see. Um, where we're at as far as the uh, integrity of our geometry, be it the, uh, gosh darn it, why do you keep doing that? That's weird. There we go. Okay. Kept clicking off of that. It's a little bugger. Okay, so same same concept as with the, um, the F sections. And if you can't get them to snap together just zoom in on it until they attach and basically all you're doing and like I said this trajectory here I might have to create this as your cladian I need to f go more behind this wall so I don't want it to be on here so it's going to kind of extend here a little bit which is fine that'll work out just fine I've already uh made that determination as far as before prior to coming on the stream as far as what is correct okay so now we're coming into yep see this might become an issue um, yeah okay see this is something I did take into consideration as well so because we're at the end of the section here we cannot take the wall segment here and take it across here right okay now here's the thing if this is okay this image is not based on what they actually used for um, you know the race layout I know as far as for the robo itself because this wall wasn't here obviously so they could go in here they had a bunch of um, uh, temporary walls I guess in this area so this may not be a terrible thing here, but what would what would have to happen is this area here would have to be uh, this would have to be three D modeled to get this here. You wouldn't be able to do a geometric spline here, and that's something I've already taken into consideration as far as the you know the trajectory of this thing, as far as how this goes. Now, whether or not I should keep this as Euclidean, I'd probably keep it as curved actually. And that's going to require some testing, for sure, um, as to whether or not I may keep this this one here. I really don't want to split that again. That's for sure, because this is getting way too tight in here. And I've already looked at too, and I know I've um, uh, talked with Racer James, I guess, about this too, as far as it wouldn't matter whether or not the center line was going in this this direction or this direction. Um, if 
we were to make this any tighter as far as these segments in here any smaller the fact that you know this is already as small as you really want it to be even though it's way out here as far as where you're actually going to be interacting um, as far as with the pits pit stalls and all that jazz you really don't want to put these any smaller than that so um, nope nope and that's exactly what I was speaking of here you don't want to split this because this is already you know based on the radius of this right here and this is what um, talked about this has already been tested if if you split this any more than it is you're creating this this section over here way too small you're gonna create a huge problem for anybody especially if you were to make this infield accessible um, which I consider doing it's not gonna bode well as far as to make this because you're already way smaller than you, you need to be here here so as far as to be able to move this at all it's not a good idea so and like I said that's going to present itself regardless because uh, I have taken a look I still have the PTF I guess for the center line that goes through you know this direction as, as opposed to going down pit road you're going to run into the same issue and it's an even bigger issue if you run the center line this way um, and splitting that any more than it, than it should be you know if I was to split this one again you're gonna this this area here is gonna end up bleeding up into um, where your pit stalls would be. That's a fact. I mean that's just uh, so. What it becomes an issue of is, do you keep this W section here and just model whatever 3D walls that they have here, and just let the game dictate as far as like if you were to overshoot this corner just run into this boundary and just keep that there that would just be its natural wall because this is where the segment ends okay so this is something I've already taken into consideration so as far as like if you're considering as far as like the racing surface itself as far as how you would race this course if you were to overshoot this and even if you had a 3d model in here all it's going to do is just bury the car into that 3d model and it's still going to stop the car right here because I'm not going to open this on um, in this case it'd be on the right I'd keep that as its natural barrier so like I said the only thing that would happen without putting this W section in here if I was to take this out the only thing that's going to happen if you overshoot this corner is it would bury it into the 3DO model that would be here and the car would stop right there in the segment it wouldn't overshoot into the this other segment going this way so that's what I consider as far as moving forward and so what would what you would essentially have to do is 3d model this area here as well as this temporary wall right here so um, I would split it where the outside oval wall and the outer X section intersects and the W section there and begin to 3d O um, Explain that a little bit more, James, because it kind of goes against what I was just trying to say. Um, I would start the 3DO model, and, and this is what I've already, you know, taken into consideration. I would start the 3DO model right at the end of the segment. So this entire segment here would have a 3DO model, for example. And even if I had to extend it even further, I guess up into this this section, this segment, that could be easily done in my mind so between these two segments you would have a 3DO model starting from this point all the way through here and like I said even if you were to overshoot this corner you'd have the 3DO model here the worst case would be is the car or truck or whatever the case would be would just bury itself into that 3DO model and stop right at that exit that, so it's a natural wall right here because this is the end of the segment as far as that x, x, x section is concerned what do you mean further along? Further along of what? I don't want to... Am I not making myself clear as far as if I split this any further, you're already making this way tighter than it should be. Even though it's right now, it's way out here and it's not touching the pit stalls. Okay, you're talking which outside wall? This outside wall? 
I can't go any further there. So if I was to make, if I was to put the uh, the W section here, right, I would have something like this. That I think is to making it too tight. You're taking away from a lot of the racing surface and even having the ability, I guess, to overshoot that corner. Yeah. See that inside X section there? That's w way tighter than you want it to be. So if I was to split that again, yeah. Oh, here it's fine. Here's where it becomes a problem. This is already way smaller than it. This is as small as you want to go. Because you get these two interpolations, I guess, as far as these X sections too close together, you're going to have issues. Guarantee it. Right. And that's what, I, that's, that's what I was trying to point out. You don't need this W section. So if anything... Whoops. So if anything, like I was saying, you can have the <clears throat> geometric spline of the wall going up, at least up to this point. This would be all a 3D, 3D model going through here up to the end of this section, if necessary. And worst case scenario is if you, if you were to overshoot this corner going into turn one... The, the car, truck, or whatever would just bleed into that 3D model and stop right at the end of that X section. It wouldn't be able to cross over there because this is not open on open on right. So that's kind of its own natural barrier. That's what I already consider. So this would have to be modeled. You know, between here and there. So between this point where I got the W section and right over here would have to be uh, yeah, I think I can throw it. Let me see if that. Now that I think of it, let me see if I can put a W section in there. Uh, da -da -da. Let me see how this actually. Yeah, see, that would all have to be modeled in there, too. So I wouldn't be able to use that here as well. So that would be the same, same scenario on this segment coming out. This would all have to be 3D modeled. So, like, if you overshoot this coming out of here, the natural barrier would be right up against this here. And due to the fact that I don't have um, the actual data, you know, in this image, I could probably apply one, stitch one together and actually apply one as far as what they actually had here for a barrier. I know they had one at least going in this turn one here, but how far it actually extended over coming out this way, I'm not 100% sure. I can only imagine that I can create this island, you know, between this side and this side as a 3 d model, and then this would just be a natural barrier. So if you were, like I said, if you were to shoot that, you would just bury your car truck, I guess, into this 3D model. Uh, this here, I should be able to put a W section, so let me check that. Uh, let me see how that presents itself. Yeah, this shouldn't be a problem. I can mark this as you clad in. Yeah. So, like I said, the only re region that you would have to model would be between this point and that point. So all this would have to be a 3D model. I guess of the walls and you would already have like I said that natural barrier as far as the, the outside segment outside of the track segment so that, I thought that was kind of important I guess to mention there too uh, appreciate any input though I mean this is um, I'm not uh, trying to snowball anybody at all I'm just trying to clarify I guess what um, sharing the information I guess they already do know as far as what works and what does not work you know as far as my experience I guess with this so um, that's part of the reason why I do the streams now whether or not and we've we've already pointed this out as well um, this layout that we're having this is this is all going to be uh, research and development to be honest um, again, applying what we do know, I guess, as far as how tracks behave, the fact that this type of uh, layout for a road course is totally new for the Enter um, 2003 simulation, this is why I choose this, I guess, is why, because uh, uh, you're combining, I guess, both the aspect of an oval track with a road course, hence the roval. So it's like, how do you marry those two together and make it work, I guess, in a simulation that is as old as it is? You know, the fact that we do have road courses in the 
the simulation, be it like uh, Sears Point and or Watkins Glen, to me, those are totally different animals because you're not applying much the same concepts as you would on this type of track because you've got a lot tighter radiuses and, and so on and so forth, at least in my mind. I'm just um, speaking, I guess, from my point of view. And, you know, because trust me, I guess I have, this is why I have never considered doing a road course up until this point. Because I've always been uh, more of an oval uh, type of builder. So the fact that we have something that's in actual existence for this is like, how do you get that to work feasibly, rationally even? You know, what makes sense? So, yeah. I'm glad to see any um, in input and feedback, I guess, as far as... I'm not trying to make this a pissing match, I guess, as far as, you know, well, you should be able to do it that way and no questions asked. It's just like, you know, I've got plenty to bring, you know, my experiences as far as doing these types of things, even... You know, I, I still consider myself somewhat old school when it comes to uh, applying general building practices. Um, but also, I'm kind of an old dog and teaching myself new tricks as far as to um, apply the new aspects as far as what I know, I guess, as far as playing around in the different sandboxes of other racing simulations, be it rec fest, a set of cores, and what have you. So I like to bring as much of that information I guess into this fold as possible and that's that's what I think about and I'm hoping everybody anybody who's just, anybody that's in the stream would uh, somewhat agree with me at least and not be totally um, ignorant of the fact that that's you know well that's 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 them you can't apply that don't tell me that because I already know that's not true it's not true. The fact that we've been able to apply pretty similar aspects that you would see in other racing simulations to include um, even iRacing for that matter, you cannot tell me otherwise that it can't be done. Because I say that's fooey. Okay. And I think James, I think is, I somewhat speak for you too. Because I think uh, between the two of us, we've necessarily figured out quite a few things that we thought was impossible uh, to apply to this decade-old simulation that um, it's like holy crap um, that's why I'm pretty excited I guess to bring in the the whole idea I guess of uh, using the LiDAR or the point cloud information we'll eventually get that figured out that's for sure oh we still doing shots nice very nice Oh, James finally got one. Good for you, James. Happy for you. So, um, yeah. So, I am really curious, though, as to as far as how this thing is actually going to behave. Um, if we were to put this actually into the simulation itself, that would be really interesting. I'm really curious. But I don't want to get too anxious because uh, and there's nothing wrong with that. You know, it's like I've already mentioned it already as far as um, the fact that you have the ability to put this thing in. And once you get um, even where it's at now before even putting these wall sections in here as I am, you could put it in the, in the simulation and actually test it. That's all you'd be able to do is test it. You couldn't run it into a race mode without making some LPs for it. But, uh, yeah, you have that ability to do that. Um, I myself tend to take the approach of I want to get as much applied to the track as possible before I do that. That's just the approach. That's the approach I take to it. You can approach it however you see. You know, if you're kind of giddy and want to, you know, try it out and see how that works before moving forward, absolutely. Do that. The simulate, you know, as far as the way it's um, designed, there it does let you do that. Okay, the fact that there is a gate right here, I'm not, 
I'm not going to get that detailed with it. I've already uh, um, considered, I guess, as far as this this type of thing here. Uh, but there is a gate here that I noticed here. And I saw that um, I was able to make picture reference, I guess, of that, to be honest. So I know it does exist there, but I'll probably just paint that on there, you know, as far as the wall texture. I'm not going to actually s split that, I guess, to make that happen. I've seen that take place, too, and I think that's kind of ridiculous as well as far as uh, tracks getting split up, I guess, to get a logo, I guess, in a specific spot on the wall. That's a terrible idea as well. What's inspiration? What's inspiration there, Torch? Inspiration as far as... Uh, uh, yeah, I forgot what I was saying there, I guess, as far as... Yeah, what did you what, what you doing? The skew? Um, yeah. Oh, that. Yes. Yeah. Loading the track and testing it. Yeah. You know, and like I said, we could necessarily do that at this point. In fact, um, what you would have to do, the, the, the primary um, prerequisite that you have to have as far as testing it in the sim, at least for testing mode, what you need to have, you need to have your track I and I, and at least that very first pit stall defined. That's really about the only thing you need. To be 100% honest. Now, to race it, you know, to actually race it and go into race mode, you know, and put the AI on it, you would have to have a lot more done. You'd have to have the LPs defined, um, your pace car, um, that stall location defined, all that stuff. So, and we will eventually get there with this build. But um, um, as far as just to get it tested out, to test it for yourself as a, you know, player, yeah can do that pretty much any stage I mean as long as you've got a PTF um, your, your track I and I everything uh, you know applied to that you don't even have to dad it if you don't want to um, you can keep your tr uh, track unpacked as far as in the game um, eventually you know and this is why I take the approach that I do is I don't I don't like to have unpacked tracks in my game uh, my track games directory that's just my approach I don't like that I like the only place that I have unpacked tracks is in my uh, track editing directory. It's the only place. So, that's you know that that's kind of my own uh, work ethic. You know my uh, workflow. So any testing that I do in the game, as far as um, everything's packed, everything is if it was done. So it's like the, the track is dated, um, such of that sort. So, okay. Just making sure timers are working on the chat too, so that's good. Feel free to, I guess, to for those that are in the chat that haven't uh, necessarily spoken or made themselves heard, you can um, check those infos available. I'm here to answer any and all questions about this type of process whether or not you take the approach of uh, you know doing a hybrid build as I've mentioned I'll just use that term you know a hybrid build I guess of uh, integrating 3d modeling as well as geometric spline you know the traditional way uh, whether or not you tend to want to take the, the approach of the 3d modeling totally you know your decision but um, I don't take away. I can only hope. Again, part of the reason why I guess I do these streams that it would take the approach of wanting to apply. Uh, you know, considering I guess doing um, a 3D modeling approach when necessary. Because uh, in my mind, I think that is the best approach. I mean, trying to teach this old simulation this old dog a new trick to much like myself uh, being able to implement new things I guess with older methods it's totally possible I mean we've proven that more times than one so far so I'm all for it 
I definitely want to tap into that, uh, you know, within reason. I guess that's the other thing, too. I mean, uh, James, I know you, if I have necessarily uh, talked offline, I guess, about how much of that lighter, and, it, and I said this earlier, too, is like how much of that point cloud data do you actually use? You know, how much is where you say, you know, do we really need that? You know, that's the other thing. You know, so if there's something that is, you know, pretty particular, specific, I guess, about a track, primarily if it's an area that is raced on or raced near, yeah, that's what I consider, I guess, that is a necessity as far as to be considered. But, uh, uh, now, <laughs> something else I guess I consider too with that being said you've got a lot of these tracks now and I'll kind of use Richmond I guess as an example at this point that track looks terrible uh, the way it is now as far as they took out all those grandstands between the backstretch and turns three that looks terrible um, I thought I had seen the worst of it when um, I had noticed my home track I guess at MIS here when they took all the stands down that they did there primarily I guess in um uh, turns three and four it looks so bare over there now it's it's it looks terrible I don't know how else to put it I mean it's but the fact that by taking all those types of big structures out you open it up to where you've got to apply a lot more of the actual scenery to the track because you know be it if there's mountains or whatever in the background or what have you you got to apply all that now because that 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 type of stuff wasn't visible I guess with having um grandstands you know in its way so yeah that's what you necessarily consider I guess as far as uh all right just making sure that stream's still going good and we're already almost two hours into this thing. It's crazy. Time flies when you're having fun. I have been using this method as uh, far as the streaming goes. I've been using what's called a uh, network device interface. And basically what that involves, without going into too much, I don't want to bore everybody to death, but uh, what it basically involves is using a secondary um, machine uh, to actually stream from as compared to the system that you're actually trying to stream from. So it's basically a two PC setup. I use the laptop or whatever to actually stream out to, in this case, Twitch from the main PC, which I'm doing all my um, work on. So it takes the strain off both my all my RAM and you know system resources I guess on the the main PC and and you know focuses just the streaming stuff I guess on the laptop and I've been able to do that all both wirelessly as well as now right now I'm hardwired as far as on the laptop so yeah that's something else I've been toying with I guess in my um, off stream time as far as um, and really what it does is it takes so much more strain off um, the RAM, especially when I'm in such applications as 3D Max, you know, more demanding um, applications as such. Um, when you're streaming off the same, for anybody that streams at all, and, you know, you kind of know what I'm talking about as far as when you're trying to stream off the same machine that you're doing your work on, and like I said, particularly if you've got, uh, if you're, running applications like they use a lot of RAM and what have you that's a lot of strain on that when you stream on that same PC so the fact that I've been able to move a lot of the streaming stuff um, onto the laptop and take the strain off of the the main PC that's been a huge huge thing and that's all using the network um, device interface or NDI for short So for anybody that was interested, I guess, in under, uh, 
wanting to know, I guess, what uh, that type of thing's all about. And you don't really need a super strong computer uh, to stream. Uh, if you want to, if you want to be able to stream, I guess in like 1080, yeah, you know, you'd have to have a pretty decent. Uh, but the fact that uh, primarily I stream in 720, um, yeah, don't need a really beefy machine, I guess, to do so. Just a strong, you know, a pretty decent. You don't even have to have um, high-speed internet. You can have uh, broadband, but I do have the high speed. It does help. I will, must admit, but um, it's not necessary with NDI. Uh, okay. Yeah, so I'm just kind of glad I'm able to do uh, these types of things, I guess, in the fashion that I'm doing it. And, uh, yeah, just kind of share my own, you know, experiences and information know on these types of things um, eventually what I would like to do which is going to require me to upgrade uh, my version of 3d max um, I do want to get a little bit more into um, uh, doing such things as uh, breakfast things like that is that's kind of really interesting I've been able to still do um, a set of Corsa um, as far as creating FBX files of tracks um, in 3d max 14 is what I'm using currently and uh, the fact that um, uh, Simulations like Wreckfest they tend to use uh, newer versions of max, you know be it uh, 16 for example uh, So I would like I said I would necessarily have to upgrade in order to get more into doing those types of things But as I was saying earlier, it's like those types of simulations they don't have a secondary program that you must use in order to create you know so like enter 2003 you have to use sandbox you don't need any other application to create your track you create your track all in the 3d modeling program you define the particular areas within the 3d modeling program as a pit stall or starting position or what have you and the game picks it up that way and that's what really interests me so I haven't heard anything about that torch. I mean, that'd be interesting. Why it would even allow that is beyond me because uh, the fact that past files were only created, I guess, as an advent, I guess, for NR2003, you know, that we're talking 15 year old technology. So the fact that they even make uh, past files available for 19, I'd find that kind of strange. I'm not going to say it isn't, but it's like, why would they do that? I mean, there's, there's, there would be no reason for them to allow. I mean, if somebody's created a pass exporter, I guess for 3D Max 19, that'd be awesome. Because then you would, you would remove the necessity to have two different versions of Max. So, well, and that's, you know, <clears throat> the fact that whoever created, I think it was Fred Anderson, the Fred, I forget the name of the person that created the pass exporter for. Uh, uh, originally max 5 actually I think it was like max 3 or 4 but the fact that that pass exporters were created for that um, version of max you know it would take some, a creator like that I guess to create a plugin I guess much the same fashion for the newer versions of max and that's why we there's no one has stepped up to that plate to do that I I don't know nothing about that type of thing so if I did, I would have created one by now. <laughs> and I'm sure somebody else would have too. But I think it's going to take whoever created that pass exporter originally for Max 5 to do that type of thing. Okay. And I'm not going to say that there isn't one, but yeah. It would definitely eliminate the necessity, I guess, for um, having the two different versions of Max. I guess to be able to do work with one simulation yeah so so far the only area that we would need to 3d model is that one area that I point out way earlier and we're coming up to that point again here pretty soon and um, 
the fact that um, if you were to spit out a DAE of this track, oh, cool, I guess I am right there. Cool, right back where we need to be. So we got our outside wall in here, so yeah, the only area that we necessarily do have to model is between this point and this point. So all this in between here would have to be modeled as far as uh, some type of 3DO model. And you would have the natural barriers there. So um, if we were to spit out a DAE of this, and I can probably actually show that, um, what you would get is where the end of this F sections are. So you'd already get that. That would already be defined as far as where that region would be. So to include the W section. Now if I was to go so far to, that's probably another fair mention, I probably didn't uh, touch on that enough. Um, in order to get where your walls are, not only would you have to texture them, you'd want to put some level of height here so that that would show up in the DAE. And that's probably what I'll do here. So um, I'll at least save this. You know, I've got that all, that outer W section in there. So I'll save this as a new PTF. Okay, so I'm going to save this as a new PTF. Okay, and then, whoops, and I forgot to do that again. See, I'm going to go ahead and turn my textures back on. Ta -da. Otherwise, if I were to go to open that later on and saw there was no texture, I'd probably freak out. I'd be like, what in the world is going on? All right, so let me save that again to the same PTF. And in that case, I'm just going to save the same one. I'm not going to make a new one. I just wanted to make sure the textures were on. I didn't make any changes other than that. So... Yep, now we got our outermost um, uh, section here. Now what I'll do is go ahead and apply some um, level of height on this as well as some texture to the wall so I have something to translate in. Um, and I'll probably do that for pit wall too. I'll probably go so far as that as well just so I have something to show up in the DAE. Now keeping in mind I still don't have uh, such regions as you know the dash lines going through the racing groove and uh, the double painted you know the painted line not the double painted line but the double half sections I guess here for the painted lines for the outside border of the pit stalls and such but that's okay um, as far as just uh, getting an initial uh, DAE so that I can create uh, such models as what would be here, you know, to fill up this hole that's going to be presented here uh, to include, I guess, this uh, region, I guess, where there's not going to be a geometric uh, spline here for the outside wall. Because we definitely want to have something there. Visible, at least. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to start here. And this is where it goes into what I was talking to before. I'm going to turn this view off, actually, for now. Don't need it. At least not for now. I'm going to go ahead and start with... Now, <clears throat> usually when, when you first open your track, and this is pretty common, when you first apply your W section, you're always gonna, it's always going to be set by default, arm co left, and undefined as far as it being racing surface, apron, pit road, what have you. So you want to make sure um, you set all that before you copy forward. So this is going back to um, using that copy forward function. Um, so now what I'll do, and I can actually go into my um, camera view into this region. I should be able to find it roughly here now since it's somewhere about this region here I should be able to see this actually be applied so I'll keep it on here just for should be generally in that region there so if I go to apply this stuff won't show but I'll go ahead and put this as a wall and define this as a racing surface and then for my top wall for the texture um, I'm not even sure I got a bunch of textures in here but let's see what I got Yep, I got a wall top here, so we'll probably a wall top. I'm not really, um, I mean, I can get 
a little bit. Pick, I'll just go ahead and apply it this way. I'll do one. Uh, we're going to apply this as perpendicular. And some people get it conf uh, confused, I guess, as far as what the difference between perpendicular and vertical is. So if you apply a vertical wall, what it does is it stays perfectly straight up and down. So like, depending on, regardless of what type of um, banking that you have, you know, as far as your height or your elevation, that wall is always going to stay straight up and down. You know, it's perpendicular to the track. Now, if, now I, t I said that wrong. Vertical meaning that it'll stay straight up and down, I guess, as far as in comparison to the track. Now, perpendicular, it's going to follow the contour of the track itself. So whatever banking that you have, any height eleva or elevation change that you have there, it's actually going to follow that. So it's like if it's got an angle on the actual, so if there's banking on it, it's going to follow that. It's going to tilt to to follow that contour. That's the difference between vertical and perpendicular. That's actually a good uh, point there. This is something else that I have available in the um, commands there. As far as like if you if you're necessarily seeing something that's of interest there, um, go ahead and uh, type in an exclamation point clip. What that does is it helps me uh, pinpoint different regions, areas of the um, the stream archive as far as to to showcase that in that playlist that I showed earlier. So it's like if it, if you if something interests you that's a, a point of interest for you, um, you have the advantage to just either clip it in the chat here, or you can clip it um, um, actually the Twitch uh, clip function. So either way, you have that um, that ability to do so. I kind of created that command there because it'll at least tell me um, of an area of the stream that you found interesting. You know, you found of useful. That was more useful, I guess, than some of the, the other stuff that I've pointed out. So, yeah. That's something else, I guess, um, I'll point out, I guess, to the viewers out there. All right. So, um, the standard wall height, this is all standard as far as the width is going to be uh, half a meter um, as well as one high. Now, we should be able to see the texture on top of the wall here somewhere so let's see where we're at what in the heck is here oh that's interesting how'd that get there what that's interesting how did that pin line get there where the heck is it I don't remember applying that let me see that's interesting. Uh, let me see where that's at. Uh, da, 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 da. There's Pit Road. So that's on the other... Oh! No, that is a painted line. What the heck? I don't remember putting that in there. <laughs> let me check that out. So that's on this side. Oh, I see what I did. That's my actual... What did I do? What did I put in there for texture? That's my wall. Duh. I thought I put it on a wall top. I guess that is a wall top. I'll be down. Okay. Yep, there's my wall top. So, yeah. I was I was considering it was going to be white. I forgot I had uh, the yellow textures in here for the... It's based off uh, the old Charlotte yellow walls. I was like, what the heck is going on? Yeah, so there's my wall top that I put on there. That's fine. These these textures aren't going to be um, uh, considered final, so uh, we'll leave that as that. Now you have for your wall sections, you have the different facades. So you have your top, which is here. That's pretty obvious. You have your left side, which is generally the side that faces your racing surface. So we need to apply that one there. I'm not going to worry about the thickness and the height and all that stuff for now. I just want to get a general wall. So I'm not going to put any fences or anything like that in as of yet. Um, so now I want to do wall. And I'll go ahead and apply this as a one as well. Okay, just to get a texture on there. And then your right side walls is going to be, in this case, would be the back side. So that's going to be 
So that's the side that faces the racing surface. This is the side that faces away from the racing surface. So that'll be this side. So you have the ability to use your camera view. So I'll put the wall texture on that as well. Like so. And I'll just go ahead and put a texture size of 1.00 on that for now. And just getting this set up here so now what I can do, now that I have all those facades, I'm going to keep this all the same. I set this per perpendicular and be it the fact that the track is still flat, it's not going to be too relevant. Okay. Um, you have the ability to, I guess as far as, um, this is going to be completely closed in I suppose. So um, if I wanted to put an end on this here, that would be walls near. And you, the way you define that as far as whether or not if it's a wall near or wall far, you have to consider the direction of your track. So like this being the direction of the track like this, whatever's facing you, that's your wall near. So if I wanted to put a wall end on, on this, what we're seeing in the camera view, I would go wall near. And then I'll just go ahead and apply the wall MIP to it and just leave it like that. And then if I wanted to put one on the opposite end, I guess I can go ahead and put this on here like that too. There we go. Um, if I wanted to put one on the other end, it'd be wall far because that's away from you. So yeah, we got the yellow walls going in here because that's based on uh, the old Charlotte textures. And like I said, those aren't final, so don't even consider, I guess, as far as that being that way. Now, moving forward, even though I have this um, texture applied on this wall near, if there is, you know, if there's, you know, moving, you know, the fact that you have this uh, wall geometry that is the way it is, it's, it's all enclosed, it's all closed in. That is not going to get applied moving forward. If I was to copy that forward, it's only going to be on this here. So, I'll show an example of that. So, like, if I was to copy this forward now, and it's going to tell me whatever, um, that's fine. Uh, doesn't match, so I just go yes. So that moves in forward. Now, if I was to go onto that section, let me check this here. It should not have. Watch it make a liar out of me. All right, so if I go back, so it's still on wall near. If I go forward, see there is no wall near on this one that I copied forward because that's closed in. So if I go back, this is the one that has it. There's the wall near applied. If I move it forward, that one doesn't have it because there's no need for it because you can't see it. So it already you know basically uh, uh, that argument as far as does that texture need to be there because that's closed in um, sandbox already takes care of that for you so all right this is something to consider I guess as far as when you're applying it, it's like uh, it kind of takes care of itself but uh, yeah just to kind of show that all right, so I'm going to go ahead and put this just on the left. Just for, this is what I like to do. I'll keep it on the left, and then I'll just copy it forward until I get to this point. So copy forward. It's going to tell me it doesn't match. I want to copy that forward. Copy forward. Yes. Copy forward. Yes. This is one thing that Sandbox has that's kind of a little bit of a time saver. But as I said before, you want to use this... Res um, and you know somewhat in reserve because you can get carried away with this one this method here because if you've got logos and stuff on your walls and you do this same type of process it's gonna if you got any logos applied as far as doing the copy for it you're gonna screw up all your logos so you definitely want to be careful as far as how you use this copy forward so if you've got lots of logos on your walls Probably not a good idea to use this copy forward. But if you're going to have a lot of um, similar textures that we guess carrying through just like we are here, yeah, this is kind of a nice little time saver as far as using this copy forward f feature. 
Okay. All right. We're definitely still making some progress, I think. Even though we're a little more than two hours into the stream, that's uh. I think there's been a lot of information shared. I still will probably get into, um, as I was mentioning, as far as uh, uh, looking at the DAE of this thing, because what you know at this point, the the biggest thing is, is uh, probably going to be creating some type of um, wall object for this void that's going to be there. That is going to be definitely noticeable. Definitely, definitely. Okay, so. Yeah, I haven't dropped nearly as many frames as I have in uh, the past few streams. So that's a pretty good thing. Pretty good thing. I'm happy about that. I know that has nothing to do with uh, what I've changed um, as far as the way I stream. Okay, so now we're on that end straight. So now if we look in our camera view. Okay, let's go into here. We should be able to see our wall ends here. Now on this, this is going back to applying the near and far. So on this thing, this is, this is the direction of our track as far as the way I'm pointing here. So this would be considered a wall far on this part. So what I'm going to do on this segment is change my the facet of my wall to wall far. And I'm going to apply a wall, wall texture to that, like so. Okay. There. Now, regardless, I mean, we will definitely have to create a 3D model. I guess to fill this void in this region. So, uh, yeah, the fact that we'll get we will have all that information uh, for our DAE moving forward to be able to create that based on uh, you know where that would need to be. Now, you could argue, and that would be a good argument, a legit argument. Um, would it be necessary to put? Um, all the height information in there first before you do that yeah that's a fair argument that's 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 probably but what I consider at this point is at least you would have the amount of area that you would have to cover as far as the 3D model so even if you were to make just a preliminary model I guess to fill this area I guess if, as far as the walls and even the safer for that matter is concerned you can adjust that accordingly once you have that started just, just something fair to mention. So, oh, uh, Rachel, Rachel's taking. Oh, <laughs> uh, I think, I think Torch has got you beat there. I think you've only gotten one. I think Torch has had like two. That's crazy. But anyway, like I was saying, you would at least have this information to know where that, um, where this needs to be filled in, at least, for example. And then once you even have that made, even without having all your height data applied to it, you'd still know how you know how much area you got to cover, and you can always adjust that model that goes in between here. I guess. So. Yeah, I think that's, did I say three? I thought I meant, yeah, I meant to say two. Yeah, I think I did say three, but that's okay. I know you, he's got more than you. Yeah, that's poor James. You know, the funny thing is, you know, the kind of an ironic thing about it is James has probably spent more time in the stream than Torch has. And no offense to you, Torch, but it's just, yeah. So it could necessarily be that the bot's being like, you know, you've got enough there. <laughs> Poor James. All right. Um, okay, with that being said, I think for I'm going to go ahead and save this. I'm going to take a short little break. And then I'm going to come right back. Yeah. See, he's showing off the hours. Booyah. Nice. All right, I'm going to save this really quick. Um, save this as a new PTF. And like I said, I'm going to take...
once I do this, after I do this, I'm going to take a short little break and I'm going to be right back. Don't go nowhere. All right, folks, we're back. Take a little break there. Um, shaking my head. What are you shaking your head at? Torch, as far as all the... <laughs> well, you're comparing notes, I guess, as far as... <laughs> all right, so where do we leave off here? All right, so we saved the PTF. Um, yeah, as far as the... Uh, yeah, so what I was going to consider now is I could create, I, I could uh, open up a DAE, I guess, of this. And what I'm going to do, since I've been in, in Sandbox here for a little over a couple hours, I'm going to go ahead and close this right out so I can refresh that. So this is all that is av uh, currently available, uh, present in our uh, track build. All we have are PTFs and our track mat files. We have no 3DOs, nothing else. We got our background image. So, those are rookie numbers. You gotta pump. Them. <laughs> uh, you, you play nice there, boys. Um, yeah. So now what we have the ability to do is I can open up the 3D Sim tool, and so I'll go ahead and do that. Uh, I got it right here. open this up and I can navigate to do an import and navigate to track edit directory to our Charlotte Roval build and we want the latest one here which would be this one I want to get the PTF not the SPX and we should be able to load this and there's no TSOs anyway but I'll do no And there we go. So we have our DAE. So what that does is it only uses the um, uh, F sections. 
it excludes the X sections right so this is what's going to be defined in this in this DAE is where the F sections um, land to include the W section that we just applied so with this information even as it sits we have I guess I can't do that, that sucks um, I was trying to do my middle mouse, but I guess that doesn't work in here. The infield looks so flimsy. It does, doesn't it? Yeah, there's not much to it yet. But you get the, the general idea as far as the layout of it, at least. But what you do necessarily have here is this information as far as to create this void. You want to get that started. Uh, to include even the trajectory, I guess, of you know how much curvature you would put, you know, in the the temporary wall so between there you know the the, the end of the pit road is here so even to um, create a DAE and you would have all that information I guess to to fix this area um, the end of pit road it doesn't really define that and this is what I was talking about earlier as far as how this is going to show in the DAE because you know it's laying out the actual end of the track segment um, pit what you almost have to dissect this I guess um, what you could do um, is you could put it like a TASD for example to define where the end of pit you know, where the end of the first pit stall would be and that would give you an idea and that, and that would show in here your TSDs would show if you were to apply TSDs that would show in this DAE so you would have a better understanding as far as how you would uh, create you know, either a model for this to cover this area as well as those areas with the miscued textures that we were talking about way earlier. So, even with this though, this, this gives you quite a bit of information as far as what you would need to fill this void um, and get uh, an, an initial or preliminary model, 3D model, to fill this void. You know, to uh, go in between these two um, track segments here, you know, as far as uh, this one's going this way and this one's coming in this way. So, yeah. It's, um, yeah, so what I could probably do at this point is just save this as a, a, a DAE. So let's do that. Let's do uh, plug and export. Yeah, should we automatically go to DAE? So you would usually have options here. But what you do want for sure is the Collida DAE. Which I already have that set up in that. And you can name this however you want. Uh, right now I got it pointed to the desktop. So yeah, you can choose where you want it to uh, where you want it to save and what have you. So go like this. And I usually keep this all default. I don't find any uh, reason I guess to uh, changing that now this is barring in mind too that you have your import options set correctly so I'll go over that just briefly okay there is a video that James necessarily does have he's created there as far as what you need to set your um, import options at. so as far as bringing this PTF in how much detail is actually maintained in the track when uh, 3d sim Ed imports it and these are the numbers that um, you should have them at, I guess, to get um, a reasonable amount of detail, I guess, into that. These these have we've proven, I guess, to be sufficient. Um, and this is uh, necessarily considering um, um, what Dave Noonan has regarded, I guess, as far as what. You know, um, how much information you actually have shown in your uh, your DAE export as far as based on the PTF? So uh, that's probably another that's another good one I guess to clip. To be honest here, I'll go ahead and throw this out there too. Feel free to use that. So what that basically does, if I didn't explain that I guess uh, uh, well enough, there it, it creates a timestamp for me to check. Um, it creates a um, text document of sorts for me to check uh, based on my chat bot to check out uh, those particular areas of the stream uh, so I can create uh, potential um, clips 
if nobody else has done that that's for sure so anyway just wanted to go over that really quick as far as that goes this is what um, we have found between uh, James and myself and even conversing with uh, the likes of David Newton the creator of the 3d sim ed program um, what we have found to be um, uh, useful uh, reasonable uh, settings I guess for creating a, uh, a decent DAE export I guess from based on the PTF so I'm gonna go ahead and cancel that because I got that all set um, and that should have put that on my desktop so let me check that out uh, let me see here minimize all this oops I forgot I left that open uh, I'm going to leave that one minute to open. Yep, so here's our DAE. Right here on the desktop. And we could necessarily open, from this point, we can open this up in um, uh, 3D Max, which I can go ahead and do. Let me go ahead and close 3D SimEd. We don't need that anymore. But, you know, just to give you a little bit of information, you know, insight as far as how... Um, how much information you can get um, off the, the PTF uh, through 3D SimEd, you know, as far as uh, potential creating models and even with that minimal amount of information, it's still quite a bit of information, to be honest. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up Max 14. Let's beam this up. Hopefully it doesn't kill the stream too much. You know, sometimes it does do that. You know, ever since that I did move um, all the streaming stuff onto the laptop and, you know, reduce that strain, I guess, on the uh, the resources of the the main PC, yeah, I haven't had too much of a problem. So hopefully it doesn't make a liar out of me at this point. I'll just give this a few, I guess, to load. It, this is usually always, this is normal as far as it takes a little bit, I guess, for my uh, 3D Max to load. I'm confident it'll load. There we go. And it should give me the dialogue, I guess, as far as uh, past things that I've opened there, and I don't need that. All right. So we go into import, and then we just navigate to the desktop, to that DAE. And I'm not saying I'll necessarily do anything with the DAE. I just wanted to show um, how this works there. So you'll, when you initially import your DAE, you'll get this dialog. And I believe James has got several videos, I guess, in this process as well. There's really no need um, to change any of this here. You can usually just click OK. And you'll get this dialog box. Once you do that, you'll get a warning, I guess, or two. That's that's fine. Okay, so the, what that does is you can already see it's already highlighted as far as what, the DAE of the track that we just exported from 3D Simit. Now, as far as the detail that'll exist in here is highly uh, dependent on how you've got the settings and those import options in 3D Simit, as I showed. So, depending on what level of clarity you've got that set up on the import options, there is going to determine how well it's going to spit out, I guess, on your DAE, especially coming into 3D Max. So, once again, you have this information, and it becomes a little bit more defined in this fashion as far as what you would have to fill in. I mean, you don't really have, and if I would have defined a little bit clearer, I guess, as far as, uh, you know, even set up some uh, TSDs or what have you to define you know, the curvature, I guess, as far as where the racing groove and such, I could have done that. You know, just so you had, and I would be able to pinpoint, I guess, those in the, uh, the material editor. So, like, if I was to bring the material editor up like this and use the eyedropper, and just click anywhere onto this, it gives me all those textures that are applied to that DAE to include the grass, the concrete, the asphalt, and so on. So, like, if I was to select any one of these, so like the asphalt for example whoops, that's not what I wanted to do um, 
Yeah, so that being... Yeah, I know what I did wrong. So I gotta go into here. If I select on this... So anything with the... That's what you want to pay attention to. That's what I missed. So you pay attention to what the uh, material ID is. So I, if I wanted to just, for example, the anything that was asphalt. Now let's do concrete. That's a little bit more defined. So that's ID 5. If I wanted to uh, pinpoint on that, I could go to here, go to polygon, and then the polygon rollout here, there's a... Uh, um, roll out here and I know I've got this kind of yours your layout might necessarily be a little bit different you can um, necessarily I think you can pull these out yeah you can roll these out but you'll have a section in here when you have the polygons uh, selected and it doesn't matter if it's an edible poly or mesh but you have this option to select this in here and you want to look for map ID 5 so it'll highlight on your DAE anything that has Whoops. Anything that has that material ID. So if I zoom out on this. So anything that has concrete on is going to be highlighted. So if I wanted to isolate that, I could go up here and detach, for example. And I'll just detach that as an object. So now that's detached. If I go in here, this is now its own object. So now I can, from this point, I can take this here, um, segregate that out as a model by itself, and I can map that independently. And that's something that I had um, considered. But see, what I would probably do, as I mentioned before, so you can see all the different texture skews in this too. See all these polys the way they are? That's the way they're presenting actually on the um, uh, the track itself in sandbox really evident out the split up segments are much higher mesh. yes yeah and that's what I was just pointing out there so the fact that all these split segments to include you have that mixture of these are these are straight segments and these are curved so you can actually see why that texture is, is so miscued on that and by me isolating you know doing it this way as far as isolating this as an object now I have the opportunity, the option, whatever, to actually fix that mapping. And this is what I would consider as far as I would do it up to this point. I wouldn't necessarily do the whole pit road, I don't think. I mean, I could, for sure. I could just do it all and I can uh, ensure that it's going to be uniform all the, way, all the way through. But yeah, you really get a sense looking at it this way as, as far as the density of the polys that exist in those different segments to include this area and that's really now that I look at this the fact that if I was to apply this even as though this is a straight segment I think this is a straight segment it might be curved um, yeah if I was to go to this region you know this is towards the end of pit road um, see and I didn't define that see that's another thing I didn't I didn't put the um, the pit wall in there as far as does it to show me where the wall openings were so I could really um, clearly define as far as where this area is so even with that even with not even having that uh, wall applied there I can clearly see I might even consider go ahead and, and map this entire pit road as an object because this e this region here is not going to be mapped the same as these regions that are more stretched out so that probably looks like doo-doo in this region as far as you know mapping it um, the traditional way you know as far as the texture skews in sandbox itself so that's another thing that you can really see you know even to go into the rest of the the model here you can see how densely these polys are as far as how that's mapped you know, you really get a sense of how that texture is actually being applied and how it's being presented. Uh, let's see, I did get, that's the outside wall, right? Yeah, so this is the outside wall. Yeah, so even on the wall, well, even on the wall itself, you can see 
the different regions as far as how it's stretched out as compared to how more dense it gets right here because of these shorter sex these are shorter segments so that's a probably another reason as to why you want to keep your track segments as not so scrunched up and chunked up as possible because your textures are gonna they're gonna suffer as far as how they apply it and think about four different groups splitting and modding track how much of a met oh yeah yeah so like if I was to, you know, based on this this model itself, the way this presents itself right now, if I was to go, and you know, even considering how this is right now, as far as how densely these polys are right here, I mean, just look how tight those are in comparison to like this here. And if I was to go ahead and split that up there here, you, can you imagine what a mess you would have here, as far as how the texture gets applied there? It's it's ridiculous and it's just you know that's something that if there if nothing else this is probably a better representation as to why you don't split and why you would necessarily you should consider doing um, a 3d model when, when necessary so this is where it really comes um, to pass as far as and this is a perfect example as far as I can as far as marrying those two ideas of um, applying both geometric splines as far as the track construction is considered as well as 3d modeling because here you have no choice in order to fill this void I, I mean yeah if you really wanted to get stupid crazy I guess as far as filling in all this void here and making sure that you're maintaining as much as the original track um, aesthetic as far as you know how the outside retaining wall is that's the only way you can achieve this is to create a model for that and to include and granted I've only got the um, whoops I've only got the um, outside uh, the cement retaining wall I don't have the safer in there now if I if I did want to I could apply that um, I, I don't need to to be honest because um, I can build the actual uh, safer net you know based on the foam and all that stuff you know now that I know how much area that covers for example I can do that based on this model I can I can take and extend this this wall out for example uh, in fact let me just run through the motions here so like if I was to select um, and I might have to do this as a control. Uh, let me see here. Got it. Get it pivoted on here. All right. So if I wanted to extend this out, uh, you're, I could probably say first and foremost, what you wouldn't want to do is to say, because prior to this, I would have been, you know, well, just grab all the you know the verts you know on the end of this and just stretch it out no you don't want to do that if anything what you'd want to do so that it maintains I guess the same structure I guess as the wall that's already here you'd want to like copy so for example let me see if I can select just to give an example so if I, I select like even just a small segment here like so this is the way I I've come to understand this is the be better way to do it as opposed to taking the verts I guess off that and just stretching it so like I want to make sure I get the top as well uh, yeah lost my train of thought there for a second so whoops I don't want that dang damn it okay I forget how to deselect all right, I'll just start this over. I forget how to decide. I know there's a way to, and I forgot. To be honest, it brain fart as far as being able to decide. Like, I guess I can just go backwards. There we go. Just do a undo. Yeah, there's a shortcut I guess for doing an undo. I forget what it is now. Isn't is it Control Z? Isn't it? I think that's right. Yeah, I think it's Control Z. Now that I think of it, I have a shortcut for that. Is it just Alt? I thought it was Control Z. 
See, I've already got the control. Is it alt? No, it's not alt. I think it's just control Z. That's what I was thinking of. So if I just go back. I've already got control already down. So yeah, that's the quick thing. So like, for example, if you've selected the wrong poly, so I'll just do this one here. If you do control Z, I'll deselect it. It's basically undo. Okay. Alright, so I'll go back into here and I'll select these. Now, I don't think... Yeah, what the heck. Does that have the end on there? Yes, it does. So I'm going to get the end here. This has got the wall end on here too. Oh, see, I don't... Yeah, I don't know if that would work. It, what makes more sense to me is using control Z because I already had control um, held down, I guess, so I can select the multiple polys. That might work too. I'm not sure. I haven't. I don't usually use it that way. I knew that it was something that I was art because I'm already holding control, like I said. So like I knew there was another key and I just forgot at the moment. There, I just use Control Z. Um, yeah. So from here, what I could do is uh, I'll detach this one, like so, as a new object. And then what I can do from that is clone it. Hey, come on now. So I'm going to get it off of here. Yep, so there we go. So now I got that. Now what I can do is clone that. All right, so I'll go to clone. Okay, and then this is the other thing I always get mixed up with, and I've got a shortcut, I guess, on this too. The difference between an instance and a clone. So if I do it as an instance, anything that I do as far as moving that forward, you know, if I was to make an instance of it, anything that I make changes you know, moving forward on the new piece is going to affect the original piece. And if I do it as a copy, that's its own piece. Now, I might have said that wrong, but I do have a shortcut in the um, how-to list. So I think it's under the how-to, exclamation point how-to. That shows that in there. So I, I might have said that wrong, but there is a difference between copy and instance. One is for... Um, if you do it, um, I think I'm correct, I guess, on this because I've done this enough. But, uh, yeah, there's a difference. So I'm going to do copy. And then I should have a second one here. So and then what I'll do is take that. Oh, actually, what I want to do is change the pivot on that. So I'm going to go into my hierarchy here, effect pivot only, center to the object. There we go. I could have done that initially before I cloned it, but that's okay. So now from this point, I can drag this out. And from here, now that I've got a nice piece here, I don't like the way that's actually applying that, actually. I can snap that to it. I guess that's the whole point I was trying to make. So now what I can do is I can, uh, and you can go ahead and make this as an edible poly if you wanted to. I don't think, it, it's not 100% necessarily, I don't believe. But if I was to put the snaps toggle on and do verts, I'll try this verts. What that should do is it should snap to this, and it doesn't. Okay, let me try edges. Yeah. Alright, that didn't work. Interesting. Okay, one other thing I could do. Whoops. I see what it's doing now. Okay. Let me uh, back this up here. What I can do from here, now that I got a piece here, let's go to the verts this way. Yeah, let's do it this way. Yeah, this will make more sense. So if I do this this way, once I got the piece, what the heck did that do? Alright, hold on. I screwed it up. Let me back this up. There we go. Alright, now I got it back to work. So now, getting ahead of myself. So I got the snaps off. I think it, because I had the snaps off there, it was kind of snapping too. So now what I can do from this point is I can select the verts. Zoom in on this. And I can select each of these verts independently and then snap those, I guess, to that. This is where snaps come in handy. So I'll just do the vert snaps. Snap that to here. Snap that to here. 
and I might have to roll this around like so snap that bird here roll that around okay and select this bird and snap that one here so now what you have is a you know a better continuation of what you already had there and you can follow that trajectory until you get to where it's filled in and then you can from there you can um, you can actually you see you can get, I can see this is uh, kind of on a skew here because it was kind of off center there but you can adjust these so like if I went it's all there it's just uh, uh, this might not be the best approach I got the snaps on Let's turn the snaps off. Try it that way. So you can adjust. See, I don't have all the verts selected, but you get the idea. As far as being able to adjust that trajectory like this. And this is a little bit better approach. Yeah, because you're going to need to line it up with this one eventually. But that's the approach I would necessarily take to that. To potentially fix that. And then from here... Now that I've got that um, uh, pivot adjusted and what have you, I can actually clone this one. And see, that's a probably fair mention. So the fact that I made all those changes to this piece here after doing it as a copy as opposed to an instance and didn't touch this original piece. Now if I would have done it the other way, any changes that I was making to this, I would have done it to this piece as well. So that's just, yeah. So now what I can do is do an edit clone, copy, I can move this forward, got the snaps off, and do the same thing. This, in my mind, this is the best way to, to approach to do this, is taking like a chunk of wall, you know, to kind of... This way, you're not taking a vertex out of there and just stretching it all the way across there. Your texture is not going to... That's not going to do very well. You're kind of... Uh, <laughs> Defeating the purpose, I guess, as far as doing it uh, more effectively. All right. So, yeah, like I said, as far as from this point, you could just go into the vertex. Zoom in on this. Scroll the mouse. Um, say that I get a little too close there. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to select those verts. Put your vert snaps on. Snap that there. Whoa, hold on. Got a little carried away. There we go. It's kind of a little hard to see, probably, in that view, but... Uh, yeah, it'd probably do me better if I uh, roll it around here so I can see what I'm doing. There we go. So that vert's selected. Hello, come on. There we go. Okay, and then we should have... This one down in the bottom here, yep. This one here. So those four verts there. So now that's snapped into place. And turn the snaps off. And basically just follow all the way through, I guess, to... And, you know, like I said, whether or not I'll keep this or not, but it gives you somewhat of an idea of the process you would use to, uh, to do this type of thing. So now I have that piece. I can clone it once again. And you can use a bigger piece, you know, the fact that I only used uh, uh, the three sets of polys or whatever. Um, you could go bigger if you necessarily wanted to. I'm just kind of trying to show an example here. Okay, so we'll move this out. So you get, you get the idea of what I'm trying to do here as far as just make my way over to connect to this here. And the fact that there's all kinds of wonkiness in here, you could fix all that. You know, by adjusting those verts if you wanted to. Yeah, there's quite a bit of wonkiness in there. Uh, could you take the box object tool? You could do that too. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah, like what you're suggesting there, uh, Torch, is to... Uh, one way... That's kind of doing it the long way, and I've gotten into the habit of doing it that way. Um... 
what would probably even be better to do uh, to be honest and I can show that really quick too is basically just ex um, expanding on your already existing here so like if I was to make this and I think you do have to make it an edible poly let me go ahead and do that so like from this point um, you could select an edge for example and from this point once you got the edge selected you could do a shift drag you could do it this way as well okay so there's that method that might be a little bit tougher to do now that I think of it but that's one way um, let me see if I can select that poly I'll just do a control Z there we go Let's just get rid of that so yeah that's one method but well, yeah what you were su suggesting there torch is to um, here let me highlight this I'll go to top view and zoom in on that yeah if you wanted to create a box so say for example if you want to do standard primitives box okay and just create a box based on that trajectory you could do it this way too just kind of make it like so and then you can adjust it as you go yeah I'm kind of top down view but you get the idea so that you have your basic shape there and you can adjust it as long as you keep that modifier you know in your list you can still adjust the height and all that jazz but you wouldn't even really need to do that to be honest because you could take it the, from this point you know kind of get it roughly into place here yeah now you think of it this might be a little bit quicker way you know what I'm just trying to show all the different methods that you could necessarily use this is a pretty big gap now they think of it so this might not be a bad um, option here so what I would probably do from this point is I would collapse this this is what I would do I'm not saying you would have to but I would collapse this and then from this point I would have that um, I would do an edible mesh or even an edible poly Let's put it as an edible poly and then go into verts and then just do the same thing with the vert snaps. So each of these verts, um, let me highlight that, zoom in on that, rotate, there we go. So yeah, what you can do from here is by creating a box, you could go from this point, turn on your vert snaps. Oop, I got two verts selected there, my bad. I go right here and I could snap that to here and it's gonna be a little wonky because it's out of place there but that's okay you can get them all go like this vert snap like so vert snap hello oops hold on and get position here right uh, why aren't you selecting the heck okay hold on the heck did I do oh weird okay anyway the piss are you snapping to <laughs> hold on a second let me zoom in on that I don't know what that's snapping to but you know the fact that anything that you have in your scene is actually gonna it's gonna want to try to snap to there we go so yeah get myself a little bit more so yeah you're just snapping all the verts I guess to gosh darn it clicking on the wrong stuff here yeah you're just clicking you know s snapping all your verts I guess to that original wall is all you're doing so that could be quicker why is that not snapping to that weird okay hold on Da, da, da. Why it's not snapping? There we go. I said just had to get the right angle, so yeah, that should be snapped to that wall, and then over on this end, do the same thing. Zoom in on that. Yeah, I don't want to. I want to do them one at a time. I don't want to do. That's for sure. There's no rush. Take your time with that. So yeah, we did this one here. Holy smokes. Okay, let's do this first. Let's back this up. Okay, that's a little too far away. So what I'll do is I'll grab all these. I'll turn the snaps off. Let's get it a little bit closer. 
don't be shy type of thing. There we go. So yeah, you can grab them all like this. Turn the snaps back on. And I might be doing a little bit, you know, harder and stuff like that, but it's like there's really no wrong way to go about it. I mean, it's... I'm sure James would have had this done a lot quicker, that's for sure. I would have probably taken the approach like I was doing. Which would have probably took longer because then I would have had to still smooth out all the wonkiness in the, uh, you know, as far as it being all warped and such. But yeah, I think this one probably does, overall, even though it's probably taking me a little bit longer to do, uh, it's probably a quicker approach. Oh, let me zoom in on that. Yep, see, so that'll snap there. So there you go. So yeah, that's taking a box. And just basically snapping it, snapping the verts, I guess, onto the original, like so. Uh, I was just checking out the Kansas Speedway ladder scan. 19 million points? Holy shit. Oh, that's right, they are at Kansas today, aren't they? Um, just insert loops to break afterwards. Oh, yeah. So, from this point... If you found it necessary, and that's probably a good point there, James, as far as um, if you needed to break this down, I think this this, this is not going to be that many polys, to be honest. You could probably create this as one object. So now from this point, you would have this as an object. You would texture it, you know, to, to match what you got. And, you know, keeping in mind, I still have some wonkiness. Let me turn the snaps off. I still have some wonkiness in my previous pieces here. But you get the idea. Yeah, so I don't. This is where the original um, wall ended, right here. Oh no! So it's up here. Gosh darn it! Where was the original? Anyway, wherever the original wall ended, there. Yeah, you could do the same. Yeah. So I would take out. In fact, let me do that. Now that I think of it. Yeah. I guess I put three pieces, three chunks in there. So here's the original end of the wall, like so. Right there. Yeah. So I can take these out. Yeah, so whether or not you would have to chunk out... Um, any of this, I guess, they, you know... You could probably make this as one model. Just this wall, to be exact. To, um, I just need to do video on Swift Loop. Yeah, you do. I know there's that one video that you shared with me, I guess, about Swift Loop, but uh, um, that's how you made the walls. Oh, as far as what the what the box. Yeah. Yeah. So you can do it that way. Um, so yeah. So I, what I did was I chunked out what I initially started off there. You know, just showing that method. I mean, it's that, this is probably a better method, to be honest, yeah. Because then you don't have to worry about all that wonkiness, you know, with those. And, but what I meant by wonkiness as far as all that uh, in and out, you know, it's kind of all jagged. And, uh, I will try to remember to do some of that tomorrow morning. Cool. Yeah. Um, Swift Loop, from what I can remember, is basically... I'm just recalling by memory. Um, basically involves um, if you wanted to texture something similar to this nature, you basically select the model, you slap it. It's kind of almost like more like normal mapping. Uh, it's it's kind of an extension or an elaboration, I guess, of normal mapping, if I remember correctly. But it's basic. It involves, I guess, as far as how you texture uh, the model as far as how that texture gets applied all the way around the model. You know, be it um, simple shapes as, as, as opposed to, like, uh, crazy shapes, you know, abstract shapes, I guess you will. So, yeah, from here I can take these verts. I'm just going to drag these. I got the snaps off. Oh, I knew it was going to do that. Okay, so let me do it this way. I just want to get these a little bit closer to where we needed to go. Here, there we go. 
Yeah. So that works. And I can zoom in on that. And then just take those individual verts and snap them to the appropriate parts on the wall there. So I'll go like this. Select this vert. Vert snaps are on. Snap that one there. Snap that. Whoa. What are you doing? Okay. Maybe it's better if I zoom in on it. I don't know why it keeps trying to snap to the track mesh. <laughs> That's what it seems to be doing. But anyway, you can see some of the problems you would run into as far as doing it the way I'm doing it. Not that it's wrong. I'm just saying what you might potentially have to deal with. So, yeah, here's the other two verts. I'll try to get it as close as possible. The fact that I only got the four verts is probably a good thing. Okay, and then the other verts here. Bring that over here. All right, why are you not wanting to snap there? I hate when it does that. All right. Get it lined up. Where did it go? Jeez, Pete. I don't know why it's like trying to snap to the track mesh. And like I said, anything that's in your scene is going to want to do that, which is normal. So if I was to hide that, I wouldn't necessarily do that. So yeah. Got all those verts snapped to that original opening that was in the wall there. So, yeah. Oops. And it zoomed all the way out. How the heck did that happen? Okay. I guess that's what I had selected. So, yeah. If you've got this selected, to zoom in on that. Yeah, so from this point, now that you have that entire thing in there. Um, what I do, I always get in the habit of doing this, um, affect my pivot, center to model, and then from here, I think, you know, with what's in here as far as what you might want to do uh, from this point is, here, let me hide the, the actual track mesh. What you would want to do, since you're not going to see it, is the, by doing a box, you're going to have this faces on the bottom. You don't need those, so just take those out. So if I go into here, go into polygons, and take those out. I think that's just the one. Is that one poly? Or is that two? Nope, just the one. So I'll just take that out. And the way you can tell, at least the way I've got it set up in my 3D Max here, is if you render it, Looking at that view, you should see that it's gone. Let me zoom in on that just a little more. Yeah, so that, take that bottom poly out. So you're not going to be able to see that, so you won't need it. So this right here, you could probably make it as a model, if you still wanted to. I think the number of polys in here is probably only, a, what, five polys? Um... Five polys. So that's more than sufficient, I guess, to make a model. But what I would consider doing uh, from this point, um, if I was to go further with it, I would go ahead and apply um, all the foam and as well as the safer and all that jazz. The same. Uh, that's what I would do. Um, but see, I would probably apply, now that I even think of it, I might even go so far as to apply the safer I guess even a little bit past where that opening is you know as far as in the track mesh now that I think of it you know it's like if I bring the track mesh back so even if I was to if you were to apply the, the 3d safer you know at least on both sides of this opening here so that way you could just line all that up there so, you know to add on to I guess this piece and then just, you could probably make that all as one model so Yeah, yeah, it's going back as far as the way it was snapping, yeah. Uh, when you lose the vert, um, it snapped to the mouse cursor. That's most cases where... Yeah, that's what I figured. It was just the way I was... So, yeah, uh, that's it's the thing to take into consideration, I guess, when... Uh, yeah, it would have been better, now that I think of it, if I would have just kind of chunked out 
uh, those areas as a separate object and I could um, hide those so I wouldn't have to deal with it that way I'm only working with what I want to try to attach to so and what I meant by that is like if I was to go into the actual track model um, select off of that yeah so if I go into track model and just chunked out just kind of drag select hello okay go to polys yeah and just chunk this out yeah I could yeah select these out like so um, actually do the control and I could uh, move those out I guess as a separate uh, what am I pushing? Oh, that's my Windows key. Duh. Dumbass. Dump butt. It's like, why is it not control selecting? Alright, so that, yeah, control select. And you can see where those polys end. So, yeah, you can just kind of select them like so. Whoops. Somehow I got that selected out there. How did that happen? Alright. Start that over. Yeah, so just kind of chunking out, I guess, what I wouldn't need. Whoops, I don't want to get the wall, though. Anyway, you kind of get the idea. Just so that you can isolate. Yeah, as far as snapping your uh, deals to. Uh, yeah. So that's probably enough there. So, like, if I wanted to chunk this out. Uh, just attach it as an object. That way I can hide it. Like so. There. See, and then that would uh, kind of take away some of the drama, I guess, of uh, snapping, I guess, to, uh, yeah. You didn't really, it's still there. You didn't delete it or anything like that. It's still there. So if I wanted to unhide it, just bring it back. And you can finish up whatever type of modeling you're trying to do. Uh, did a lot too, but it's easier to see when you aren't moving the mouse. Angle of the dangle. What was that? <laughs> Not sure what that's in reference to. The angle of the dangle, yeah. Alright, so. Anyway, that gives you a little bit. I think moving forward, and this gives you somewhat of an idea of um, what you'd have to work with there. I mean, it's it's still quite a bit of information now. Like I said, if I wanted to, I could probably take our standard 3D foam that, um, now keeping in mind too, I did not set um, the wall to where I would have wanted it necessarily, you know, based on even LiDAR information for that matter. I just set it at one meter tall, um, half a meter thick, whatever so that's something else to consider too um, as far as making sure that your wall prior to making your DAE is what size you want it to be um, because as this sits right as this stands right here I think I would have to make the wall a little bit taller in order to accommodate I guess the foam that we have you know if I was to build this out and actually create the safer um, because that, that information we already know um, as far as the size of the safer, you know, as far as the height of it being 40 inches and so on, um, we can apply that foam, you know, we could easily from this point here, we could create um, an edge for that to, to follow, uh, a space, you know, using the spacing tool and so on. We could, we could do all that from here. And then that distance and then as far as creating the 3D model uh, steel, we can do all that even from this point without having any other information you know so regardless of whether or not like I was saying before as far as to put this the safer some of the safer I guess applied to the actual track you wouldn't need to it's not necessary you know because like I said the um, the information for the safer we already have you know as far as the thickness of the foam and the um, the only thing we don't have um, and that's that still holds true is the the banking as far as how much um, angle you would have to have on the um, the foam and all that that noise so um, the fact that you don't have any of that banking information that's um, 
relevant in the wall you know that's a critical that's a critical piece of information as well so that's something else to take into consideration um, J Jenny B uh, what's Jenny B I missed did I miss something there <laughs> that's funny uh, what do you mean by that? I see uh, Torch did another shot. Uh, he's been successful again. That's funny. All right, so um, yeah, there's so there's still quite a bit that I would have to apply for sure. I guess to the DAE for me to do that um, effectively. You know, as far as doing this here, because like I said. Not having to set this, uh, not having that information as far as the um, the height views, you know, as far as the angularity of the wall and all that stuff, you would need all that to do this effectively. But even without having that information, you have something to start with. You know what I mean? So you could you could um, at least create this, save it as a scene, and then once you have all the information, you know, based on that, you could do another DAE, bring that in. And you might have several layers of DAEs with different information in it, but you could do it that way too. I think that really depends on how much, uh, now that I say that, that depends on how much RAM you have available. Because obviously you'd have to have the rendering capability of having that much information, I guess, in your maxing. So, angle of the dangle in a lot of his video. I say that, YouTube streamer. Oh, generic. Oh, I. I guess I don't. I don't know the reference. So, angle of the dangle. I never. If that's new to me, <laughs> I'll have to take your word on that. So, yeah. Let me check. Yeah, that's still doing pretty good there. Everything's doing okie dokie. Stream's been going very well. I'm 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 pleased. I'm, I'm happy this uh, method that I've, I'm using now with the uh, NDI is going to be a uh, much better option, I guess, than doing the way I was doing it. Uh, Minecraft and Fallout 4. Oh, okay. That's that could be. I'm not all that much into that. And I know that's a big thing. Um, I understand that, but that's probably why I'm not aware of. So yeah, I think we've gotten enough, you know, quite a bit uh, to go on um, as far as what we need to do from this point. Uh, one of the things is going to be to uh, figure out, I guess, the um, the lidar. And James, probably what I'll do, I'm, I'm feeling a little bit. Um, I know I'm well over the three hours that I normally like to go. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and reset this. I'm not gonna save any of this, but this gives you somewhat of an idea. Of what you know, processes you know. Once you have all the information that you need, uh, how you'd go about it. You know, showed a couple different ways of how you can fill that void and all that noise. I'm not going to save any of this, so I'm just go ahead and reset. And what I'll do to this point is bring in my scene. I have a couple different um, versions actually, as far as with the lidar data. And I've played around with the idea, James, that you were um, entertaining um, as far as um, mapping the actual LiDAR uh, to the sat image. And to me, and that's kind of why I want to go through this, it's kind of more work than I feel it's necessary. But uh, let me bring this in. Uh, I think this is my newest one. Uh, la, 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 la. Yeah, this would be my newest one. So if I bring this one in. So this one I've already got all lined up to... Uh, this one I've already got my cones applied. This was my initial method of applying the cones based on... Uh, saving this scene, I've already removed. Uh, let me double check that. 
Yeah, I've already removed the ground plane. And this is without having the LiDAR actually mapped. Um, angle of the demo typically is in reference to boobs, old school slang, or other bits and <laughs> Okay, gotcha. I gotcha. All right, so yeah, without actually mapping the LiDAR itself, okay, I've got these control points in here, and I think I've kind of showed you this already, but I'm going to kind of go over this a little more detail. So, like, my first cone here, if I zoom in on that, I know you were mentioning, um, too, I guess about as far as um, having a more uh, less defined cone. See, like, mine has several um, height segments on it. The fact that I only need one with about eight sides, as long as I got that point, that, that's a fair fair point. Not, no pun intended. Um as far as being able to create that as a 3DO model to potentially bring in the sandbox to apply that as elevation um, in our X sections in sandbox, that is a fair point. Now, what I was, you know, without mapping this, I'm, I'm going to keep on to that. Without mapping this and just going completely by the information that's in the point cloud here I know it takes a lot longer to do it this way and I'm, I'm kind of open for suggestion here without taking the time to map the the lidar itself and get that all lined up and what have you I don't know of a better way because I know what you were trying to show me is like doing the uh, the, the lines and have the cones follow that I don't I still don't think that's a as far as the way that the data that I have here doesn't work very well because you still have to snap that line to avert you know to the actual LiDAR mesh so as far as dealing with it you know it's fine as long as it's a relatively flat surface as far as applying that line to you know initially get down so you could have the cones follow that path doing it that way I haven't had success and that's like I said that's the considering not mapping the lidar so although I feel that this this method seems to be a little bit um, slower process I still feel in my mind still and like I said I'm looking for your input I guess on this at this point um, not using the snaps on this. I'm, all I'm doing is I zoom in on this. I select one at a time until that point. I don't know why I got two on this. Until it pierces the LiDAR. To me, that's giving you a little bit more control and making sure that it's hitting the point as it needs to. As opposed to trying to snap a line, I guess, to that LiDAR information. So, um, keeping in mind the mesh is relevant and is fake and created by, yeah. No, I, I do understand that, but even doing it with the line method that you were mentioning there, it still doesn't, it, it doesn't make, it doesn't matter. You're still going to have to snap, you know, try either creating a line or just moving these into, it's still going to take as much time, I guess is the point I was trying to make. So whether or not you do a line and then have, the cones follow that line or just laying these cones out based on the uh, sad image you know at zero plane and then just moving it into place you know piercing it, it's still going to take us just as much time see the snapping to avert it, it doesn't do any good see like if I do that let me, let me just show this so like if I select a cone I don't know why I had two there but anyway um, so like if I snap avert to this see look at well, oh, shit yeah so like if I snap a, see what it tries to do it's not going where it needs to go you know and I'm trying as best as possible to go straight down but see that it's it's putting it out of line it's not putting it where it needs to go it's moving it from where I initially had it way out of whack 
So that snapping doesn't do any good. So going back to how I placed these initially, I put those right over top of the wall based on the sad image. So in order, in an effort to bring it straight down until it pierces, that point pierces the actual LiDAR information, that's the only way that I see feasible without jacking up, I guess, the original position that I put the control point in and just bringing it down. God darn it. Keep selecting the wrong crap. All right, so... It just doesn't work the way you were trying to show me, I guess. It, because, you know, trying to bring it straight, it do, the, the snapping tool doesn't let you do that. It just comes straight down until it snaps. If we had that option, then, yeah, I could see that would be an option. But Yeah, that's probably it. But you get what I'm trying to get at. I mean, there's no way to bring it straight down. If there was a way on the snapping tool, you know, to... If there was a way to bring it straight down, I wouldn't have no argument there. But there's no way, because, like I said, these points that I've got in here, I've based it on the sad image, and, I, and that's all I've done is put it right over the wall based on the sad image at zero ground plane, right? So all I want to do from that point, bringing these control points that I've based on the sad image, is bring it straight down. And the only way that I've found feasible to do that is to, to do it one at a time because you can't snap it because if you snap it it puts it way out of whack it doesn't it's moving it off to where you put it based on the sad image the, the flat uh, sad image I don't know why I got two in this deal but that's kind of funny I find that hilarious so up to this point this is the only way I've seen pos uh, feasible to bring it straight down turning the snaps off and just bring it down until it pierces that LiDAR information. And with, you know, I've done this enough, you know, on this particular build, enough times during this week, as far as trying to lay down a line. And so it's, it's taken me just as long to do it this way than it does to do it with the line and have it, you know, do the spacing tool and have the, the cones follow that. It still takes just as long. And it probably took me a good two and a half hours maybe to do it you know going one by one and I've got a lot more cones uh, keeping in mind that you know I was just trying to do that as an example that's probably how I ended up with having uh, two on top of each other but I was just trying to get an idea of how many it would take I guess to get legitimate an amount of information you know as far as um, the trajectory I guess you could say I guess of um, how these uh, points are you know, and so I was just throwing in a bunch of, um, bunch of, you know, closely related, uh, if that's a, if that's a word. So, like, I got these pretty spaced out here. So, like, if I zoom in on this, this one's already piercing through, so I'd have to bring that one up. And keeping in mind, these cones are already over top of the wall, based on the sad image. Okay. So you get you get a really good indication as to I know what you're saying as far as it's not yeah that's why we can't really use all this information as it is because it's it, it that's yeah because of all, you got all this lumpiness in here that's all it is that's why they call it a point cloud so that's why the only way that I've seen to have more control is to do it this way until that point. And I do agree um, with what you were saying as far as creating a lesser detailed model as far as all the height segments and stuff in here. I could easily redo that. That's not a problem. But um, I hope you I hope that it's explaining as far as what I've dealt with, at least so far as far as dealing with it. I understand what you know you're saying as far as um, you can't go by what's presented here you can only go by wherever this cone is and I've, like I said I've got this over the wall based on the sad image it's just a matter of adjusting it up and down straight up and down to get that point to pierce the LiDAR data so you have that correct height data you know and then eventually moving that into sandbox and then being able to apply that to your, your height data for your X sections 
So if I was to remove, for example, this, um, yeah, let me just hide the, the actual track, match the LiDAR information. Yeah, highlight that, and we'll hide it. So you get an idea. Yeah, see, I haven't adjusted any of these, but you get an idea of how this would work. You know, just for the other viewers, I guess, that are watching, uh, of how this point cloud data would work. So, like, these control points, what the, all they're doing is just showing, uh, pay no attention to this one. I'll just delete that one. So, yeah, you get an idea of exactly how this height actually changes. You know, there's our highest point. These still need to be adjusted, but you get the idea of how that can be potentially applied. Uh, we'll be putting together some videos on... Yeah. We aren't... No. And, you know, but this is the types of things... That, what I wanted to show is exactly what we're trying. You know, because there is a way to use that LiDAR. It's just a more effective way to use it, is, is all. Yeah. And that's, that's all I was trying to show. Um, but, you know... Realistically, I don't think it's it's really any good, I guess, to do a snap. I, I guess when it's all said and done in my mind, as far as everything that I've tried to do is snapping it to the library, it just doesn't work. You know, in order to keep that control point where you want it, and doing it the method that I was doing. So, and what I could do, and I could show you this, just to clarify even further, I'm going to reset this. Yes. Um, I at least wanted to show a little bit of what we're necessarily dealing with as far as how to use that um, cloud uh, point cloud data. So, and you know, to just to kind of let the viewers know that there's there's things in the works. I guess anyway, there's nothing a hundred percent. you know, 100% done yet. It's just, uh, alright, so let me go to here, 18, and I'm going to bring in my older mesh here. This has the sad image in it, with, along with the LiDAR. Okay. So, let me remove, I'll just hide the um, track LiDAR, the point cloud. So, this is what I did. And, and again, just to clarify a little bit further, uh, let's go to my first cloud my first cone so what I did and this is all at zero point keeping in mind so this this um, sad image is at zero actually I've got it um, raised a little bit and I think I only did that just to show that I had my cones lined up properly I can actually move this down so if I go back to zero on this see it, what I was trying to do on the cones was to uh, put those at zero. Uh, let me see what I did here. Is that on that first cone? Darn it. Oh, I guess. Yeah, there's my first cone. I still got that. Uh, Alright. So if I zoom in on that, I'm trying to remember what, my, what I did here myself. So I thought what I did. Let me zero this out. Yeah. So I think I, what I did, I initially played around with how that easy that would be to adjust it. I think that's what I did. I'm just trying to remember what I did here. And this is all preliminary. Keeping in mind, this is all very, very preliminary. But you get the idea as far as I took the sad image, ground plane, it's all mapped, you know, as far as uh, based on Google Earth uh, measurements and so on. And then what I did... And this is the other thing that was a pain, is I had to render, once I got the cone where I felt it needed to be, is render it, and then adjust it one at a time. So I don't know if that's easy enough to see, but I got that cone, that point, over the wall. Let me zoom in on that a little bit more. I'll go top down, like so. This will probably be easier to see, and I'll zoom in on it. I, but I ha you have to render it each time and then adjust it accordingly. So this was my process. So I've got that cone over the top of the wall. Okay? And that's what I did to 
every control point that I have in here. So that's what I've carried over, I guess, into that other scene that I was showing as far as, you know, and then bringing the LiDAR into it. If I bring the LiDAR back I'm based on this cone, for example, I'll bring the point cloud back in, okay, and then put that at zero, which it is, and then I'll hide the sad image. Okay, so now I have the point cloud. I got these lines in here, which I don't need. Yeah, let me delete that. Just, that was just trying some things out with that line, which <laughs> wasn't working for me, to be honest. Okay, so the fact that... Okay, now I've got the, the <coughs> point cloud at zero. It's all at zero, zero, zero. Now I can bring the cone from this point down to the point cloud until it pierces. This has been my approach, I guess, to understanding. See, now that's bringing it to where it needs to be based on the point cloud. And that's at zero. See, now, something else that I, I've come to realize, I guess, with this point cloud, right? Because of the way this is laid out here, this has got a pretty um, significant amount of slope um, on one end of the track as opposed to the other. And that's what I come to find, I guess, is with putting these control points in there. So keeping in mind, I guess, that this point cloud is at zero. Everything's at zero. So if you consider where I've got these po uh, control points, so like this one, how far down is that? This one's now at minus 11 uh, point zero eight four from zero. Okay, so what you would probably also have to consider, I guess, as far as moving that in there, that you'd have to zero this out, affecting the pivot only. So that, that's at true zero, I guess you could say. So you get a better representation of actually how much elevation change there is from one point to the next. So that's something else I just thought of, I guess, just now, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah. So, but I, I, I hope, if anything, that gives you a little bit of understanding. So the fact that we cannot, you know, if we had the ability to be able to take this entire lidar model this point cloud information and put that in sandbox we wouldn't even have to do this okay but the fact that it's nearly impossible uh to it's just too many it's too much information even for this one um there's in fact let me uh count it out here so the number of polys in this alone um keeping in mind i, I have the dirt track here as well so even if I was to consider just the track, not the dirt track, but just that, that's um, 119,000 polys. So we're just south of 120,000 polys. That's just way too much information to break down into a 3DO model and bring that in the sandbox to use as uh, elevation data. So the fact that we do necessarily have to consider... Um, using control points, as we've uh, labeled them, you know, uh, based on the LiDAR data, using a cone, and um, like I was saying, as far as you want to use it, uh, make it so that it's kind of almost the same idea of this 3D Safer process, and it's basically um, creating maybe even uh, two or three, maybe even four different models of control points to bring in a sandbox so that you can use those control points as a reference point as to how that um, elevation data as far as the X sections in the sandbox need to be adjusted because you can adjust your elevation based on those control points that's the whole idea of it you know because we can't bring this ladder data in to sandbox itself it's just way too much information uh, by itself so um, if anything that's what I wanted to but uh, I guess the other thing that I consider, and I know, James, you have necessarily shown this as well, I think it's a little bit, um, for lack of a better way to put it, it's a little bit more tedious, I guess, to apply, and I can show this too, I guess, as far as 
what is involved with it and it might necessarily make a liar out of me but um, if I was to bring uh, material editor and I think let me try this here if I was to bring in uh, let me try it this way if it'll let me there we go and I'm going to point to on the diffuse let's just bring in that sad image from the ground plane let's see how this works um, yeah let's go whoops that's not what I wanted I wanted my 3D meshes Charlotte 2018 yeah so let's bring in this alright and then if I go ahead and apply that to the model okay and then what I'd have to do now I assume this is what you you had done there I was um, as far as using the unwrap for it to get that mapped well, let me go dot, top down okay and this is somewhat the approach that I used to is you know you still have to apply unwrap to the lidar like so and then open up that editor all right and then bring in that texture now you've got all this data and this is see my computer's already starting to struggle as far as to get this all in here so this is the other thing if you don't have a system to handle all this data it's not gonna happen that's the other thing I mean I've got 16 gigs of RAM and my system is struggling so um, yeah what I would do here is this uh, alright I think that's all selected is it not oh maybe I didn't okay so let's go ahead and select this all in here alright and then do mapping do a flatten map I'm not even sure if it'll do it I gotta give it a second it's it's thinking about it yep see this is something that I deal with so as far as being able to map it uh, this is what I consider is somewhat of a problem and it's still thinking yep so it might necessarily crash on me so yeah see I can't do it see this is, this is the problem as far as mapping it um, yeah see it, it's crashing on me it's just too much data to, to map that so th that's what I consider as far as like it, it's just not feasible I guess to do that because it's just way too much data so unless you have something even close to what you've got as far as the system it's impossible so it's like that's why I go back to what I was trying to show just getting the control points set up on the on the the, the flat sat image and then just bring those points down I guess to the lighter mesh you know bring into the lighter mesh yeah it's gonna crash on me and this is kinda what I dealt with before yeah it's not gonna work so let me see if I can hold on hopefully this doesn't go away on me I'm gonna have to close this out alright there we go so hopefully I didn't kill it too bad yeah it definitely it's like I said I can't I can't do it and I mean that's what I've been dealing with as far as mapping it it's it's impossible for me so and like I said that's why I want to show it well that's what, you know it, it could very well be and I'm understanding you've got the 1080 that's a beast I don't have that see and I guess I'm what I'm considering is what you know anybody that would necessarily want to do and use that kind of information what's the feasible um, option I guess to, to be able to use to do that so that's why I show I guess the method that I was showing you know and it does to me regardless of whether you map the uh, lidar data or not um, it's still gonna take just as much time as far as you know if you do the line like you were sh that you were trying to show me 
and then have the cones that you design or whatever to follow that line, it's still going to take as much, just as much time. I, I, the only reason why it took as long as it did for me from what I was showing there is I was putting a lot more cones than I probably really needed. But I wanted to show the difference, you know, the differences as far as, you know, just somewhat the process that it would take. I don't think you would necessarily need that many cones as I was putting in there as far as the control points. But um, that's also something I need to consider as well um, to, to, to make an overall model for the control points is to reduce um, the cone itself, you know, to only one height sag and then um, only like eight sides. I think I had like 20 sides and I don't know what I had, like three or four height sags. That's probably a little too. As long as you got that point on the one end there, that's really that's all that's necessary. And regardless of whether or not you use that to uh, um, snap to the vert, I, I and again, I don't think that's really an option, I guess, to snap it to because you see how it moves there. If you were able to move that snap straight down, I think that would work a little bit more effectively, but it doesn't, it doesn't allow you to do that. Unless you've got some more insight, I guess, uh, to share with me on that. But... Um, that's really, to be honest, that's about all I really had to share uh, for this evening. Um, as far as, um, you know, lots of information out there as far as uh, what we got going on as far as moving forward, um, how to uh, use a DAE, and so on. I've got some um, work I could necessarily do prior to next week um, to clean up, I guess, uh, the pit road. Um, stalls in, uh, area and such like that um, yeah so I think uh, between that as well as because uh, the pit road area shouldn't change too much as far as elevation um, that should stay relatively there. The, the, the main area that's probably going to change the most is closer to that outside wall um, that's really the prior main focus as far as that banking that's that's going to be um, why we need to get the the ladder information to work out so between uh, figuring out how to apply those control points uh, using the cloud point data and uh, uh, even applying I guess um, the uh, you know showing if I, that, that pit road area as far as cleaning that area up there the miscuing there um, those could be done and that's something we can work on I guess for next week and I think that's probably a good place to end it and um, call that good and I hope that's uh, been uh, good information I guess for everybody that has joined us uh, this evening I guess as far as the stream I appreciate uh, the company of uh, Racer James and Torch um, it was a pleasure um, hope that you could uh, necessarily join us I guess um, more often I guess I understand that uh, life sometimes gets it does get in the way but um, with all that being said and done, I guess uh, appreciate um, appreciate that, and uh, uh, I'm gonna call it good. So if any nobody else has any um, other questions, um, I'll leave it open for just for a couple seconds here as I close some things down. Um, if there is no other questions, there I will necessarily uh, call the stream. So feel free, I guess, to uh, shoot them out there. I guess if uh, you feel so willing. You trip over life. <laughs> yeah, don't let it do that. Don't let don't let it get the best better of you. That's for sure. Doesn't do that. Doesn't do any good. I know I've had, uh, you know, personally, I guess just to kind of touch on, I guess a little bit. Some some may not necessarily know. Uh, I know I haven't necessarily shared with just about uh, everybody um, as far as my um, absence within the last uh, majority of the summer. Um, the fact that I had. Uh, critically injured uh, my left leg and I've been recouping from that uh, for some time and the fact that I've been able to uh, get past that somewhat and get back into doing this a little bit more I've had a lot of time I guess to think about the direction I wanted to go as far as dealing with uh, such things as NASCAR Racing 2003 season so um, yeah I'm kind of very ambitious uh, to say the least as far as uh, uh, moving forward these type of things so um uh, do necessarily look forward to um, plenty of more streams uh, dealing with this uh, same exact thing. Um, 
I'm not even 100% sure uh, how many episodes this will take, I guess, to get it to to fruition um, as far as to, uh, but uh, for, for sure, make sure that um, Oreo side, you're getting a host from that. I appreciate that host. Thank you very much. I don't know if that's an auto host. Doesn't really tell me. I'm sorry. Uh, so yeah, Oreo side or anybody coming from Oreo side's uh, stream there. I guess I appreciate that. Welcome to. I'm just actually bringing the stream to a close, unfortunately. Um, but I was leaving the uh, uh, was leaving the mic open. I guess for anybody that did have any questions as far as uh, what we've gone over this evening. I know there's quite a bit of information that was put out there, and uh, much to model over and uh, to think about. So, um, but yeah, there's definitely some big things in the works, I guess, as far as in the realm of, um, uh, NASCAR Racing 2003 season for sh in it by itself alone. Um, so if there's nothing else more, I guess, to be said, I, again, I want to thank, uh, everybody who decided to show up, the, the host, I guess, by Oreo side and, uh, uh, again, uh, Racer James and, uh, torch there, I guess, for your company, I guess, during this one. We had uh, uh, Justice come in there, I guess, for a little bit, too. Kind of chimed in. I haven't heard any word, I guess, from that from that side, I guess, uh, lately. So, hope that uh, most information that I provided there was useful. And uh, I really want to thank you for watching. Thank you.